a high school anti-sex ad. I All had right. one up that was like a lightning bolt and it was neon pink and shit. <laughs> I liked it because it looked very 80s. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very 80s. I liked yeah, it. And yeah. then um, like Luke is like, so who's uh, who's telling you not to have sex in high school? Yeah. I'm like, what, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> He's like, your logo. Yeah. Look at it. Yeah. It's like an anti-AIDS ad from 1992. Yeah. Like, like Degrassi days. Like Degra- it's a, it's yeah. a, it was a very Degrassi look to it. Yeah. Or, or it's like the font for all the credits in Drive. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah. yeah, kind of. But um, no, it was straight. it was straight block letters and like very dynamic like hand brushed like barely he's like yeah it looks almost like porn or yeah, yeah. <laughs> anti-sex or some shit like that so um this is what the ad became and now that's what it is i like it though i mean it's got a I almost like it. a I think, it's perfect. I think it's great broken perfect. street sign kind of feel to it yeah dirtier the better dirtier the better i think so and with that we will start yep Let's we have got raji samra at are you at nothing right now i'm at nothing right you're now. at nothing have you killed all your social media no, I'm back. Like you mean, like at Inst- like you're talking about Instagram? Well, you had the best Instagram, uh-huh. and I can't find at Bracus anymore. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, that account got compromised. Compromised. Yeah. So I'm I'm at Raj. I S- think it's like 99. Raj SS. Yeah, ninety nine yeah. some shit like that. Go on with the numbers. Yeah. Oh, because Raj S is taken. Raj SS is taken. But Raj S ninety nine. Triple S. <laughs> triple S is now. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't mind the triple S. That's actually, all right. That's actually a pretty good idea. I should have done triple S. Raj. Triple S. Uh, I should have done triple yeah. S. I should have done triple S. Get rid of the numbers. Yeah, go yeah. triple S. Actually, I don't see if I can change that actually. There you go. That's actually a fucking awesome idea. Actually. You're welcome. Thank you. And Raju. <laughs> yes. We have got you. Yes. You want to introduce yourself? Okay, this is uh, Raj Sanga. I have no handle. There's no Twitter. There's no Instagram. But you can hit me on Facebook. Just look for Raj Sanga and you'll see the if you want yeah, actually check out my profile on Facebook. <laughs> and Go there, and if you need movies to watch, check out my Facebook page. Check out your Facebook page. Yeah, there's a good link on there. You've got uh, you've got what you need. Yeah, for the people in need. Yeah, in of need. a good movie to watch. Yeah, fuck it, bro. That's yeah. Way, way, but uh, way, well, that's better for me yeah, if you're it. if you've got a public profile, yeah. I'll link that up on link. the uh, description below. For sure, yeah. So if anybody's wondering where to find you guys, that's where it is. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. We should pick up though the last thing we were talking about, um, oh, which yeah, is not sure. shout. Well, earlier you mean earlier just now. Um. Earlier before, the, but yeah, you said you were talking about, you said you had a Shout Factory thing. That you, yeah, there's um, yeah. not Shout Factory. What was the other one? It was, was it Kimchi? Kimchi. Kimchi yeah, is Steelbook. like the new Steelbooks. Yeah, yeah. Um, Specialized in limited, limited numbers, right? Like very, very limited. Like a thousand? thousand? It's a thousand, fifteen hundred max to a lower. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, and that is only obviously like movies that would be considered somewhat B movies. Like they, they're not going to do Gladiator, the gla- Kimchi Steelbook. The Raid. Yeah, it'll be the raid. They did the raid, Leon. They did. Uh, they did, but did they do Gladiator? Or would they have done a movie like that? Or is that too big? I think they would have done it. Really? I think they would have done it. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, now, would they have done it for because I, it was Gladiator? Because no, it's no. Kind of, or would they have done it because it's a Ridley Scott movie? No, because they've done, they've done Iron Man. Oh, they have. Oh, okay. A list as a guest, right? Oh, I didn't know. So, I mean, they will do anything then. <laughs> they, they they will, and but like again, it's you know you can order from them, mm. but the quantity is always gone in two seconds. Yeah. Right? So it's not easiest to get your hands on no, it right no. away from the no, from the factory. Not right away. And secondhand prices are always jacked up. They right just away. Skyrocket. Every skyrocket. time. Every time. Skyrocket every time. But it's such a cool thing to have because it's not, it's not just a Blu ray. It's yeah. like the booklet, the lobby card and the and the individualized it's like a, it's like a the movie credit card in a sense. Yeah. The numbered card at the back. So that's actually really cool. That is really cool. That's the reason I got that Enter the Dragon VHS back there, right? Mm-hmm. Because it was there's a lot in, involved with it. It was a lobby card. It was a, yep, a yep. film like a piece of oh, the film. Oh yeah. film, yeah, like a film strip or something. Uh, oh film, yeah, what was it called? Yeah, like a, a piece. Well, not the negative, but the actual like film. Yeah, like it's a piece of actual film they would have played in the theater. Yeah, and um, I wouldn't have bought it if it was just a like a VHS. VHS, exactly. who cares, right? Exactly. But well, the soundtrack was in it and all so that. So it's kind of like what they did with Interstellar. Like they have like um, you get you get a piece of you get a piece of the this the film. Yeah, yeah. What well, oh, would have yeah. played in the theater somewhere? Oh, okay, cool. I mean, it's not obviously it's not from the like a master or anything like that. Yeah, but it's I mean it was it was made into a film and obviously it's bullshit i mean anybody can probably get their hands on it but still it's cool to have i think oh, so, 100%, yeah. especially, yeah. Uh, especially yeah. you're a fan of that 100 percent. yeah better than a dvd way better i think so yeah, yeah. and the thing is i think uh, there's that that kind of argument that um which is i'm a huge proponent of like physical media when it comes to either music or movies like mm-hmm. i'm not a huge fan of streaming yeah like, streaming is for good like if you're going to be watching something like if you want to go on netflix just to watch something when you're bored or something yeah. but the quality of blu-ray or 4k whatever it is that is the that's the best way to go, I think. Yeah, yeah, because you see it in its in its pristine form. In on the disc. 
Yeah. Like we were talking about this yesterday yeah. too about yeah. the idea of like um like television broadcasted over cable mm-hmm. and how it's really like it's at a very low bandwidth. It's garbage. Like it looks it yeah. looks muddy. Mm-hmm. I remember the first season of Walking Dead I watched on HD and AMC. And oh, thought, it's horrible. It's terrible, man. Yeah, like it horrible. looks really bad. Right. But you get the same thing on a DVD, right. which isn't 720. It looks like phenomenal mm-hmm. right. compared to the broadcast edition. Right. Yeah. And then what you get over the air broadcasted just over the air into an antenna looks so much better. Mm-hmm than what you would get over like TELUS or, you know, not to knock TELUS, but over your cable provider. Yeah, Shaw, whatever, yeah, yeah. Shaw whoever mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. It just looks way, way better. And yeah, I think disc is like that as well. I mean, you get, you get a much better quality if you have that physical media in your hand. Yeah. 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 Cause like, um, cause when you're streaming, when you're streaming stuff, it's, um, it's all compressed cause you want to be, cause you want to you want to take advantage of that bandwidth. Right? Exactly. But when you have physical media, like so for example, like a Blu-ray, um, it's everything is uncompressed. Yeah. So you get it's like listening to a record. Exactly. Yeah. So it's all linear sound. You, they they don't compress the sound, so it's not like listening. That's a really sound. like a, that's a good term. The yeah. linear it's a linear sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is it isn't compressed. It's actually yeah. the full the full thing, which it's a full um, media that you're getting. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Do you find that Netflix is better than most though? I mean, I find that Netflix generally gives you better quality streaming than say Hulu or if you can get your hands on like some of the American yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like, like yeah, that crave and stuff like that. Yeah. I think I think it's better. Um, I just signed. I got. I just got Netflix. Um, that upgraded one where you get the 4K content. Mm-hmm. But um, there's only one show on there that's that's 4K plus HDR, which has that HD that high dynamic range. That, yeah. that, that makes the colors pop and mm-hmm. like everything. And that's Marco Polo. And I was just watching it yesterday. But um, so it's not there yet. Mm-hmm. But when you but it's very difficult to watch. Keep going. Um, yeah. Get a little turn. Yeah. I, it's very difficult to watch when you go back, and you watch something on. Uh, just regular streaming, like uh, yeah, like for watching Iron Man on Blu-ray, right? Mm-hmm. The, so it's it, you could, it's night and day. Oh it's yeah, completely night and day. So it's getting there. Yeah, but um, nothing will be physical media. I think, in my opinion, anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I I do like I prefer. That was the thing that I prefer DVDs so much over mm-hmm. Blu-ray. Like I got out because of Blu-ray, just because like Blu-ray gives you. It's we said it yesterday. It's an embarrassment of riches. Mm-hmm. They give you okay. so much stuff in that Blu-ray. Like I mean, just the idea that you can stop the movie in the middle of your sequence and hit any one of your buttons mm-hmm. and then watch a making of the the montage you're watching. Like you yeah. can you can actually go in Civil War and or not Civil War, Captain America, whatever it was, um, Avengers. And you can see halfway through the scene that you're watching Ultron fight the Hulk, all of a sudden you can you can figure out how they do the scene. I don't like that. Yeah. I think it's too much. It takes mm-hmm. you out of it. Yeah. And usually it's not great. Like special features aren't what they used to be anymore. Like they're kind of more filler. I would like to just get one really good director's commentary. Mm-hmm. Like one great director's commentary running alongside the movie and that's it. Mm-hmm. Like tell me what you did while I'm watching the movie rather than hear like, you know, all the other crap they give you, like all the filler crap they throw in there now. The only other thing I would want is deleted scenes if they have those. Yeah, deleted, deleted scenes, scenes too. Scenes, yeah. Those are always like a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I like, yeah, for me, I like to like, for me, like we've talked th- about this at length, uh, Raji, is that um, I like to see how the movies were made. Mm-hmm. And yep. so from, like, I guess, yeah, it's, it's, it all depends on what you like, right? Yeah. So, um, but a it, lot, it is a matter of taste. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And the thing is also, like, I just got the Back to the Future um, 35th anniversary, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And that content that you're talking about doesn't come on the disc. What you do is if you select it, it goes online. Oh, wow. And then they, then it, uh, so it doesn't take up the, it, it, I don't know why they do that because it, we might as well just put it on the disc. Yeah. Because, um, then oh, that's it, weird. Yeah. It has to, then you have to go on it, your Xbox or whatever it, it is. Mm-hmm. It'll find it online and it'll stream it back to your TV. And I'm like, you know what? That's just that's too much. I that's, hate that. Yeah, it's, that's it's too garbage. much. And I think it's, a lot of people don't like that. Yeah, and that's that's my biggest beef with it. Yeah, uh, they're giving me too much stuff that's just useless. It's it's wasting my time. Yeah, you know, I mean, if my internet connection isn't great, I gotta wait. And God forbid you get like a frozen machine. Yeah, like you know, in the middle of what you're doing, because mm-hmm. these days, like RAM and memory are are a real factor mm-hmm. in streaming your media or even having a physical copy of a disc, right? Yeah, if your machine's not strong enough to do that, then yeah. you're gonna have Skippy play. Like it, it just takes you out of the moment. Mm-hmm. I'm a I'm a big guy, a big a big proponent of. I'm not a big guy, I'm an average size guy. <laughs> well, you, <laughs> but I'm a, you probably not. Raji, <laughs> Raji's a big guy. That's a big guy. Yeah, I'm a proponent of um of watching the movie from beginning to end without screwing with my movie. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I don't want to be taken out of it. Yeah. I want to see exactly what you want me to see from beginning to end. Yep. Mm-hmm. that's it. Yep. Afterwards, if I want to go see the deleted scenes when it's done, Absolutely. I'll go see it. Mm-hmm. And the remotes now too, man. It seems like everybody makes a remote different. Like the blue button isn't the blue button on every every machine. No. Nope. Like whatever button you push, you're getting some other shit they're throwing at you. Fuck, I, I hate that. Yeah. That, um, yeah, because it takes a while to get used to. Um, because especially when you're using a game remote, mm-hmm. uh, I think uh, a lot of people like I can't. That's why I can't. It's very hard for me to give my Xbox One to my parents. Yeah. Because even if I give them the yeah. remote, my parents are Punjabi. They don't know anything. Yeah. So if they gave them the remote, they'd be sitting there. It would collect dust because like they would rather just not. They'd be so confused on how to use yeah. it. Yeah. 
So if I gave him a game control, my dad would be like, this is a piece of garbage. Yeah, what are you giving this yeah, for? Yeah, I don't need this. Yeah. So um, so it's very hard for people to use on a game control. Like, for guys, for, like guys like us, it's easy, right? It's so, not bad. It's not but bad. But yeah, our parents, that, that generation doesn't give a shit about your game control. They don't care. No. Yeah. They want like four buttons. Yeah. Like, stop, play, rewind. Power. Power. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, that's all they really want. Yeah. Because it's like it's it's not even that they can't get used to the technology, but technology is moving way too fast for them to give a shit. Mm -hmm. And I mean that remote, that game controller isn't gonna work for them at all. No, I think it's moving too fast for us sometimes, man. You think so? The technology, like I'm trying to keep up with a lot of the bullshit too, right? Yeah, I think it's hard, man. Oh yeah, I remember like when you uh um, when you were saying you, you, me and you were talking about, um, I think it was either, I think we we're talking about gaming consoles or whatever it was, and uh. Oh, I can't remember the, exactly what it was. But I remember you saying that, um, how does this work? Yeah. And I said, um, you've never seen this before? And I was like, I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, and the thing is, I, it, but it, it clicked with me. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, this is not for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I didn't know the fucking Xbox doesn't play Blu-rays. Yeah. Like, like, there are little things like that that, yeah, just, that make you wonder. It. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. But then again, like, you're not a big gamer But you're not either. a big gamer. Oh. Yeah. But you're a classic gamer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, old school gamer. Yeah, the eight bits. Yeah, eight bits. So when that sixty four dollar freaking thing comes out, yeah, oh, the Nintendo, the Nintendo Mini? Yeah, classic. Yeah. yeah, then I'll be all. all you see, there's the a game. Genesis coming out too, right? Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, there's a, a Genesis version coming out as well. Oh shit! No you know what I'm looking forward to? Uh, so Turbo Graphics sixteen. Turbo Graphics sixteen. Yeah. Turbo Graphics, man, that thing had a weird range of very awesome games. Yeah. I yeah. had a Japanese version called the PC Engine, and it was oh, it was phenomenal. Was? Yeah, I had a oh, PC cool. Engine. There's a long story behind that that we'll we'll save for a, for a later episode mm -hmm. um but there is yeah there was a pc engine out there i remember bonk's adventure and ninja spirit i played those games until the discs melted like it was just they were so much fun right but yeah they were they were like the first real 8-bit you're a sega, or 16 bit are you a sega genesis guy over nes guy no i was always an nes guy oh, okay. yeah yeah i think most people were yeah i think yeah. so i think yeah. so yeah I think, it, like, I had friends who had both, yep. but they never really played the Genesis as much as they played the, the Super yeah. Nintendo, right? No, not the, even close. Yeah, because yeah, the weird thing was is that the Genesis came out while the NES was still in its prime. Yeah. And so, finally, uh, Nintendo was like, you know what? Because the, the Super Nintendo was actually supposed to have a, a, a CD drive in That's it. That's right, yeah. Made by Philips. But they didn't go down, down that route, mm -hmm. which is a good thing because the, the, Sega, the Sega Genesis lasted way too long. They tried to milk everything out of it, so they made, like, a... A, a CD drive on top of it and they made like another component on top of it and then they just kept adding more and more stuff to it. It, yeah. like it was just getting gang raped by like hardware. It was like yeah. an AI stack. Yeah. It had a bunch of stuff on it. Now, was it, it wasn't Philips. That was Sony, wasn't it? That was the, the birth of the, um, the PlayStation. Mm. That was meant to be the PlayStation. The oh, Nintendo. really? The Nintendo one, yeah. Oh, is that right? That's, how, that's why they're gray. Oh, wow. That's why it's gray with the purpley, black, and blue colors. They have very oh. similar colors. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, Sony was the maker for the Nintendo's version of the, the CD drive. But they, oh. couldn't, they couldn't come to an agreement over like a bunch of little nitpicky shit. Oh, and I Sony, was, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, I guess I was wrong. Then. And yeah. Sony walked away and said, you know what? I guess Screw that makes it. sense. I can see that. Yeah. They made their own, which ended up being oh, the wow. PlayStation, which, is huge, which, yeah. which walked away with the market. Yeah, which I mean, destroyed everything, yeah. The yeah. PS1 really did. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Like, there were a lot of weird things that happened in that era. It was like uh, Nintendo refused to go 2D. They wanted to go 3D. The whole thing was we're going to have like 3D sprites over pixels and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, Nintendo, or Sega could do it all, right? Sega could have 2D games and 3D games. Yeah. People just gravitated towards that Sega place or uh, sorry Sony PlayStation, right? Yeah, and it was yeah. No one had seen like uh, like no one had seen proper like CD like images like yeah, pre yeah you know like uh, you know video in a in a video game before like like full motion video and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, it, it was a it was like a revelation. Do you remember like cutscenes would have actual people in them? Yeah, like uh, in Sega. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I remember when when Dracula came out for that system. Uh, yeah. there were cutscenes from the movie. Yeah, in the game. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, it was yeah, crazy. it was very cool, and they looked. The good. game was horrible, but <laughs> yeah, the game was terrible. Yeah, well, the cutscenes were phenomenal. I mean, oh, it was yeah. very cool to see like live action oh, sequences wow. Wow. leading into what you're gonna do in the game, right? Yeah, I'm surprised they don't do that nowadays. I think it was kind of cheesy, though. Yeah, Maybe that's what it was, right? Yeah, yeah because yeah. all the movies that are based on video games now, uh, and vice versa, are garbage. Yeah, mm. I'll buy that. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think so. It's kind of gone. There was a really strong era there for a bit where you had a game tie-in. Yeah. And they were really good. But then, like, I think the last one I played that was any good at all was maybe Revenge of the Sith. Had a half-decent game. Maybe, yeah. I'd say so. And I think, like, after that, you really stopped seeing it altogether. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think right now, I think the only thing that they're, they're hoping on is uh, Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, because yeah. they're saying like, that's also, did you guys see the trailer for it? Yeah. It doesn't look that bad. No. But but it looks like the game. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Which so, is weird. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I, I think because, um, what is it? Uh, Ubisoft is actually producing the movie. So that the video game company is actually producing the movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I don't think they're expecting it to make any money. 
from what I've heard. Oh wow! And they're I think it's just an advertisement for the game. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, it is a good advertisement. I think so too. We yeah. got some like top names in the movie itself, right? It's Fassbender. And yeah, yeah. Who's the the female in that? The female oh, lead? Uh, Marion Cotillard. I think that's her name. Really? Oh, she's. I, I, I didn't I, know I, it was I, her. I, I might have butchered the last name, but no, like, no. It's yeah. A, yeah, it's like Cotillard or something like that. Yeah, and from uh, Batman there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I know who she is. Anyway. Talia yeah. Al Ghul. Yeah, Talia Al Ghul. Yeah. 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 So think- I'm not Talia Al Ghul, Talia Al Ghul. No, I'm not. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I- <laughs> like, really? Uh, yeah. Who'd you who'd you think you're putting one over there, huh? Uh, so Nobody. The, the game sells a lot, obviously, I'm assuming. Oh yeah, games make a lot of money. Like the Assassin's Creed one specifically. Yeah. yeah. I mean those franchises yeah. are huge. Even right? if the game is shit, somebody's gonna buy it. Someone's I mean, like it. they're all like everybody's gonna buy it. They wanna mm-hmm. see what it's gonna be, right? No they'll, they'll bitch about it. But um, those games are almost like they're you. You have a built fan base that's going to go out there and buy those yeah. games. Yeah, yeah, it's like um, like Medal of Honor, Call of Duty, Call of Duty, especially. Yeah, Call of yeah, Duty Call of is, Duty just is like, bonkers. They, yeah, they they they've jumped the shark on that franchise. Yeah, my oh, personal really? opinion anyway, because um, I see that. Yeah, it's just they they, they come because it's it, it's an annual one because they have two studios. So one studio will make one one year, mm-hmm. one studio will make it the other year, and um, it's a cash cow. But like before, like Call of Duty would make like like a billion dollars whatever it is but now you're seeing the decline because yeah. it, because it's ha- it's having um what's the term franchise fatigue yeah i get that yeah yeah absolutely and um and man uh, i had franchise fatigue like three games in like three so, games yeah. in i thought that game was just garbage yeah how many was, games is it, in, is it in now oh god i think it'd be like 12 12 oh, I think. yeah, yeah it's a bunch there. it's around there it's in double yeah. digits yeah yeah like, it's a yearly franchise right well it was for a while yeah and they they t- petered out for a little bit is grand theft auto yearly too no, Grand Theft Auto is up to five now, yeah? Yeah, they're, they're five. But they don't, every yeah. three years or four years, again, get a new one. Yeah, the Grand Theft Auto 5 is out, but Grand Theft Auto 5, can, they can afford to release a game once every whatever because their yeah. games make... Like, that's why they're, they're, the, their studio name is the best, Rockstar. Yeah. That's what they are. <laughs> it, it is like... Like they're like it's the game industry's version of a big big budget release. Yeah, exactly. It's oh, like yeah. every every time they release a game, that's good. That's yeah, good, people salivate for those things. Yeah, that, that's yeah. good. It yeah. is good. I yeah. mean, it's good for the game industry, and yeah. they uh, the games are quality. All right, they're think. not like they don't give you the the best idea of what the people making the games are all about, like raping prostitutes and fucking punching pimps and shit. Oh yeah, they just fucking they they just, yeah. they put every game is pushed to like. To, to like the, the max, yeah. yeah. Every game is, has gotten better, and in my yeah. opinion, better and better. Oh yeah, yeah. they look better, they play better. The storylines are like far more grittier. Like the last one was very much it felt like a, uh, like a an extension of Heat in a sense. Oh kind wow. of, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Wow. It had that kind of feel to it. Like you were you were those guys. You were the team. You're oh, De Niro's shit. team. Wow. And you're putting together a little bit of a heist and all that. I mean, they're great games, man. Yeah. Even if you, you think it's too is that, that that's hard to drop, but like no, the, no. Um, the the good thing about those games is that you can play through the mission. The, the missions are hilarious. Mm-hmm. Or if you just want to sit there and just like screw around for a while and just like kill prostitutes or just go around <laughs> and just start butchering people and stuff like that. Yeah. In this huge open world, you can do that too. And that's that's why, I, in my opinion, that's what makes that game work. That it, game really, yeah, yeah it, that's that's exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. That's that franchise made side missions. They they made side yeah. missions. Mm-hmm. I mean, until then, games really didn't have a whole lot going on as far as like you know, maybe outside of Oblivion and the Elder Scrolls series. Yeah, probably. Yeah. You had a bunch of like a bunch of like niche market games that gave you here's your main your main playthrough and afterwards we'll go find a thousand gems and see what happens you know yeah. then like then games like grand theft auto made it really interesting it's like what's going to happen when you have achievements mm-hmm. what happens when you punch a hundred hookers what's going to happen yeah mm-hmm. you know oh a new suit and not just a new suit but it's like a new gold suit <laughs> it's like just weird little things like that's that would amazing. happen right that's yeah amazing. like cool little things like that would happen oh yeah yeah that's yeah. Amazing. yeah like even like um yeah i remember uh, i was playing even saints row like so those kind of games like those games are um there's a reason why they have replay- replayability yeah and so that that's why I respect about this game is because like games should be like movies should be like games yeah especially like action movies mm-hmm. like like turn all the rules off and just let the people make the movie let, let the people make what they want to make it's it's true yeah there's a there's a good theory that a bunch of people share about that though it's like if you did that well then you wouldn't have a movie because it'd be over in twenty minutes I mean if you unhinged your hero if you didn't make him kind of stupid mm-hmm. if you didn't make if he didn't have bad decisions well there would be no movie to watch right yeah that's like um it, it, the most that my my favorite version of that is uh, or, or like uh, example of that is old boy. Mm. You walk into a room. The guy tells you, "I'm gonna make you jump through these hoops." Yeah. Well, I've got a gun in my hand, so fucking shoot you and shoot you. No hoops. All I know is you were a bad guy. You were gonna screw with me. Now I've saved myself some trouble. Mm-hmm. And then the movie ends. Yeah, you've got like a 25 minute movie. Yeah. You now he gets out, finds his daughter. Maybe he doesn't find his daughter. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, the octopus chick is my daughter. Oh, <laughs> imagine that. Good thing I didn't have sex with you. End of movie. End of movie. Right. 
It's like the the Walking Dead. That whole second season, they made so many bad mistakes. Like every character made a dumb mistake. Yeah, that see, led that's to the worst I, I mistake. I thought I was the only one who didn't like second season of Walking Dead. That was awful. Yeah, that was the most garbage season of maybe any television series I've ever seen. Yeah, and yeah, it, yeah you know, the thing is, because we say that because we want the best, because we expect the best in that show, because that show should know better. That exactly. Yeah, yeah, those exactly. characters should figure things out by now. Yeah. To where now, I think... What okay, was that? I was going to say, is it canceled now? No, it's still out. They're, oh. I think they renewed for like two more seasons. Holy shit. I thought it was going to be coming to an end or something. That's what I heard. No, um, Game of Thrones did. Mm. Game of Thrones, I think, is done after seven. Eight, right. I think. Is it eight? It's eight, yeah. 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 So Game of Thrones is done. And then, um, well, at least I have an end in sight. But Walking Dead has got um, a lot more story to tell. There's a lot of really weird shit that's about to happen in this series. Like, they, they do open up a larger... Did you read the comics at all? Uh, no, I didn't. Actually, no. no. So there is a larger world that's going to open up. And not not by a small measure at all. Like their their world gets much bigger. Um, some really crazy characters show up, and uh, they they stop making dumb decisions because all the dummies are dead. So now you've got very dangerous people. It seems like everybody you meet now is going to be dangerous because like the dummies are dead. And if they are stupid, they're working for somebody who understands that you're an idiot. You know how that whole thing like you never promote yeah, a smart guy, right? Yeah. Yeah, you only yeah. promote morons, morons because yeah. then they're not going to take your fucking job. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's yeah. what happens now. It's like the only guy, the only dummies around are the ones that are around because they're stupid. You know, I, I'm going to send him to the forest first and hope to God a thousand zombies don't jump my ass. Yeah. Oh, I was going to ask yeah. this question. Um, we, we, I think we've had this discussion before about if you're in the if you're in the zombie apocalypse, mm-hmm. uh, one weapon, weapon of choice, mm-hmm. would it be? I've said this a thousand times. Okay, now what are we talking? Slow zombies? Uh, Fast zombies. Brainless idiots. It's a tree brainless, shovel. We have brainless fucking retards. Yeah, it's a tree shovel. Tree shovel? The tree shovel is arguably my my number one, not arguably, it is my number one choice for a melee weapon that doesn't fire anything. Uh-huh. It's easy to swing. It's got a small edge to it. You can sharpen the edge. It'll take a head off. Then yeah. you, can hide, you can dig a body. Uh-huh. It's easy to carry on a backpack that's got straps. If you've got like a skateboard backpack, it'll go on there. Shit, It'll sit in the side. I've thought this through. Yeah, you've thought this through. Yeah, two weapons that will be your best friend are a combat shotgun and a tree shovel. Because combat shotgun is a widespread and a close range. And a tree shovel is so easy to swing. I'm a sword guy, too. I like swords. And you're not going to find a good sword or be able to like really own an edge. Mm-hmm. You can't really get an edge. But any rock will sharpen up the edge of a tree shovel. Any rock will flatten it out. And those things are so heavy duty. And at the same time, they're not hard to repair, right? Mm-hmm. So if it does fall apart on you, well, any real solid piece of wood, like broom handle, like there'll be broom handles everywhere. Mm-hmm. You can always repair a tree shovel too. If you've got the like the components, mm-hmm. like the ends, you can always repair it. The middle is usually hard too, because like it's a tree shovel, so it's not it's not made to break, it's not made to bend, and that ma- they don't make them to be like like sissy ass shovels. Yeah, they're meant to work, right? They're not gonna break on you. And linseed oil. You'll find oil everywhere. You can oil the shit out of that handle and it'll never break on you. Holy shit. Yeah, a tree shovel is your way. A Fiskars actually make an excellent tree shovel. Holy shit. Yeah, man. that will you that fucking, won't break you on really you. Thought about this. I've I've thought this through like have, have you had nightmares the about being the zombie apocalypse? No, but like <laughs> every now and then my mind wanders, right? Like what sure, would I sure. what would I really want oh, to do? Not, oh, yeah, clothing too, like what kind of clothing do you want? Mm-hmm. Like shoe soles will be your number one, like your best friend and a good glue. Because like you'll run through your shoes, right? But like the soles of your shoes will go first. Yeah. So you want to have like anytime you see like shoe soles anywhere, like any any shoe at all, shit, man. If you got like some thread needle and thread, some shitty glue and shoe soles, that's gonna be your like your number two. You gotta have good soles in your shoes. Wow. Yeah, man. There's like there's a whole like world of zombie apocalypse knowledge that you need to have. I thought you were gonna say it's a crossbow or something. Fuck the crossbow. You know how long it takes to fix a crossbow? Like Daryl's crossbow in yeah, The Walking you, Dead. Yeah. What the, what's wrong? Yeah. With you? <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna break, man. And sooner or later, like you're not gonna have the stuff to build it with. Um, like, do you guys know? Like, okay, and not to go off topic here, but do you guys understand the the principle of having to build a bow. Like, building a bow is not the kind of thing you just walk up to a tree and build a bow right, and do right, it. Like, there's an actual right. process to making that thing malleable enough to fire. Like a recurve bow, there's a process to make those things strong enough to shoot straight and strong. Right? And you're not just gonna make one. Like, it's not like Commando or Predator where you walk up and, like, just bend a tree and make a bow. Right. That's that's going to snap on you. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, did that just destroy your childhood dreams? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not going to happen. Like, I mean, in the, in the zombie world, that's that's not going to happen to you. Yeah, like, the slow zombies, you can use anything, right? The I slow mean, ones, anything. Yeah, but yeah. the zombies in, like, 30 days of night. That those are guys are fast motherfuckers, yeah. man. So, you got yeah. I thought Crossbow would work good on those. It, it would work well. If, but yeah. if the thing breaks, you're screwed, right? If it breaks, are, you're yeah. screwed. Are, yeah. those, are those zombies worse than the ones in 28 Weeks Later? 28 weeks later? Yeah, those fast running fucking psychos. The ones in 30 days a night are intelligent. Yeah, those they're, are, they're yeah. vampires. They're, they're yeah. Tough. yeah. Those guys are vampires. 28 days oh, later. Yeah, that, though. Yeah, those are zombies. Like, so we're talking zombies versus zombies. Zombies, yeah. 
So like the ones in um, twenty eight days later and twenty eight weeks later, those are just rabid dogs. Oh man. yeah, because I remember the, you know that um, uh, that remember that one show that had like on Spike where they do like they do that story, they do battles. They, they yeah, have yeah. All those, you yeah, know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, yeah it was the two science nerds yeah, who get yeah. together. Yeah, and, and that guy and they, they they do all yeah, the logistics yeah. and all that stuff. They had one the guy who wrote um, that vampire movie. Uh, mm-hmm. What's it called again? Uh, Thirty, 30 days, days a night. night. That guy and the guy who wrote um, uh, World War Z. Mm-hmm. And they said who would win in a, in a fight between uh, zombies versus vampires. Yeah. And they put like you know zombies numbers versus uh, vampires. Um, uh, they you know strength, but they would they would we get weak over the t- uh, over a period yeah. because they just can't. They have so many numbers. They the have to blood, go the sun. Exactly. Can they drink vampire or can they drink zombie blood? Yeah. Is and, there any like, new yeah. drink to it? Yeah. yeah. And then they, they they actually acted it out, mm-hmm. and uh, the vampires fucking rolled them. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. They're they're much much smarter. Yeah. Much smarter. Yeah. What was your what was your choice for weapon? Because I mean, like this was obviously you've got one. Yeah, um, for one, but and I I want you to tear apart my argument. Is no, like, I'm not going to tear it apart. No, I, I want you like to, to like really like assess. We'll it. just dissect it. Yeah, yeah, we'll just go through it so and find you, out what you it don't is. mind. Mine would be like um, would be a sword. Mm-hmm. So why would that not be a good choice? No, I think it is a good choice. Mm-hmm. The the thing is, you have to get like a good sword. Yeah, I mean, like Paul Chan swords, which are like kind of arguably the best the best market sword out there that you can pick up by hand. I mean, I'm sure there's like better ones out there now, but when I was really into swords, those ones were like the ones, right? Mm-hmm. Like traditional build build quality, all that kind of crap to them. But um, you can't just go into like, you know, the corner store, like, you know, where they sell swords unless in the you, mall. Unless you're in Chinatown. Unless you're in it's Chinatown. Never, it's never yeah. super China. I was just there and I, I could have bought a pair. I could have bought three for like but, 50 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> but, but even then. They're, they're just, kind of really yeah, those are just metal. Yeah. Like they're, they're, they're going to yeah, break they're, apart they're, pretty fast. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a reason why they were 50 bucks. Yeah, there's a reason why they're really got, cheap. I, I could have got her down to 30, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> 30 yeah. bucks. Like how much carbon is going to be in that, right? Because you have to have like a high carbon count in those things. Have they been folded? Like, or is it just like a butter knife? Yeah, like I was thinking, like maybe like either um, Connor McCloud sword or like Kurgan sword. Yeah, <laughs> like a <laughs> solid Highlander Clan McCloud. Exactly. It was a Ramirez, right? It was Ramirez's Ramirez's sword. Ramirez's blade first. Yeah. yeah, his blade first. Yeah, a lot of people don't. You know, a lot of people don't know that. That it's Ramirez's it's sword. Ramirez's sword. Yeah, and he it's like, give, he kind of inherits it, really. Exactly. Yeah. After Kurgan fucking Kurgan takes him. Fucking rolls Ramirez. Fuck man, <laughs> that was sad. That was sad. That was sad because you really want Ramirez to be a bad dude, uh, and yeah. Kurgan is just that much worse, right? Oh yeah. Man, it was rough. Yeah, I was. I, I, the, if you, I, got, I recommend anyone who's listening to this download the Kurgan theme by Queen. It is the, one of the greatest it's songs ever. It's incredible. Yeah, it is really good. It was on. Um, it's a kind of magic, right? It's kind of magic. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's not on the there because there is no yeah, uh, soundtrack, soundtrack for yeah, no soundtrack for that. For Highlander, yeah, which is sad. That. That's rough. Yeah, and um, oh, um, going to um, another topic is that uh, apparently there's going to be they're going forward with another Superman movie. Yeah, I heard that. A Man of Steel sequel. Like a true sequel, right? True sequel. Yeah. Now, they have a list. I'm not sure if anyone's seen the list of potential um, directors, Mm -hmm. whether it was fan voted or they just put a list out. Um, And one person I definitely didn't want to see on that list was there, and that was Josh Trank. Oh, wow. Who directed, Roger, your favorite movie. Um, of all time, right? Of all Num- time, number one, number one in Djibouti. <laughs> if I'm not, uh, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah, I doubt he'll get the job. Yeah, if, if so, yeah, I don't uh, think he will. Yeah, so, who who would you guys, if you guys had to, um, who would you nominate? If you gave me like a couple, just like start naming them off. If you guys had to, that's r- that's a rough one, man. Like, who can really pull that off these days? We're not getting Richard Donner. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's you're not. Sure. Yeah. So if you had to like 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 take it, take everything into account, like you know how the movie, like what's been established so far in, in the DC uh, yeah. extended universe, the murderers. Yeah, the murderers. The murderers. So if you had to, if you had to name, if you had to put, name off some people, who would you? Um, who would I pick? Huh? Yeah. Man, is Trank really that bad? Wow. Because I I don't know if he was a problem. With Fantastic Four. Have you seen Chronicle? No. Chronicle's good. Chronicle's fairly incredible. Yeah. Yeah. But Best he, Akira remake ever. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. the way I put it. Yeah. No, I, I, that's not me. That's a lot of people yeah. think that. Yeah, that's yeah. that's like a, a thought out there. That mm-hmm. that really is based yeah. on Akira. Yeah. I mean, you've got a, a young kid who gets powers with his friends who all kind of get a little bit like they all get jacked in the movie, but in Akira they don't. Then like the older one who he looks up to is the one who tries to save him. They have a fight, and then. So you think it has? Do you think it had more to do with uh, either director or more to do with studio, studio interference? Studio interference. I think studio interference. Yeah. Fuck that movie. Okay, so because yeah. so so that's the rumor though with Simon Kinberg and Josh Trank, right? Like mm-hmm. how Josh Trank was going to be involved in the uh, the Star Wars sequels, yeah, or the um, the side stories, but because Kinberg still had some hand in that, mm-hmm. they're like, oh no, I'm out. I'm not going to do anything with that. Okay, w- would you trust? Um, would you rather trust a director who's either? Because I think the studios will say like they would rather. They, like even with David um, Ayer, mm-hmm. who's 
um, who we love. Well, sabotage, obviously. Exactly. Yeah. Sab- I mean, his his record is fairly good. Yeah, it's fairly good. Yeah, I mean, too. it's not hard to look up. Like he was involved in Training Day, Fury, Sabotage. Exactly. He makes he makes very good movies. Yeah. Did yeah. you did you work that that Kurt Russell movie? Uh, that something blue. What was it? Um, where uh, where. Uh, you sorry. can feel free to look that up if you want. Yeah, I'll take a yeah. look at it. But like, um, but he didn't do Training Day though. That was Antoine Fuqua. That was Antoine Fuqua. I him, believe yeah. he's got screenwriter credit. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah, that's right. And uh, so, um, I understand like studios they want to like hire in, like young like not as experienced directors like not well not as well established directors I say mm-hmm. for lack of a better term is uh, so they can save money on it right yeah but if you're gonna th- if you're because Suicide Squad was a big gamble for DC um, it was huge yeah so he so would you rather spend the money and take a little bit of a hit. So you can have a, let's say, guaranteed hit mm-hmm. when you have an established like hit you put, maker. You put a name out there. You put yeah, a name on yeah. the, the name is still going to bow down to student friends with those kind of movies. Yeah, I think there is like they, unless you're they, big, they don't, they don't get final cut of those. But, yeah, no. but do you think but, never? Yeah, but do you think like a, a like a, a it's almost too big for final cut. Too big of a yeah. Big do you think a d- director could, has has more control? He can tell his producers to like you know what fucking leave me alone. Like, Man, I'll, if, I'll, if Ridley Scott like couldn't I was hire, just gonna say Ridley Scott. Yeah, yeah, if he couldn't hire like an ethnic cast for Gods of Egypt, was that Gods of Egypt yeah. or Gods yeah. and Monsters, Gods and yeah. Kings, yeah. whatever the whatever, whatever one it was. Thing was. Exodus, yeah. I think. Gods of, Exodus, yeah. Gods, yeah, Exodus. Mm-hmm. Exodus if he yeah. couldn't hire an ethnic cast for that with his name, you know, I mean, because he's not gonna make a shitty movie. Because realistically, Ridley Scott made Gladiator with guys that nobody knew. Nobody knew who Ralph Muller was. John Monhonsu was not a huge name. Not at all. And at that time, Russell Crowe was kind of a nobody. He mm-hmm. hadn't done huge, huge movies, right? But Ridley Scott got it made. But then again, like, why couldn't he do it with with Gods of Egypt or Gods and Kings? Gods and Kings. Gods of Egypt is Gods one of the all white god cast, right? Yeah. Gods. So no, wait, so was it was Exodus. It? No, wait, it was Exodus. Yeah. Exodus yeah. is the movie, but the, yeah. the subtitle. I'm fairly certain it's Gods and Kings. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. No, but the other movie that came out too, Gods is Gods of Egypt. Yeah, that's, and that's yeah. one like all the like what? Gerard Butler. Oh yeah. fuck, Gerard and, Butler. Uh, that guy needs the Game of Thrones guy yeah. are playing Egyptian gods. Yeah. yeah. He needs what? Gerard Butler needs consistent work he needs much <laughs> better work than he's putting out there absolutely i think he's playing a dolph he's taking roles just because he enjoys acting you yeah. have to think because yeah. yeah. like even on jimmy kimmel they were saying like <laughs> yeah dolph. They, they <laughs> 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 remember what dolph said right the movies are an ex- extension of his training extension of his training yeah, yeah the movies are an extension yeah. of his training i think i told you that literally 15 20 years ago yeah it still applies to this day yeah it does when but his is, movies are an extension of his training when is um when is kindergarten cop it's like this equal coming out to um bargain bin well, it's on torrent sites. It is. Yeah. Okay. It was um like video on demand, right? Yeah, it it already came out. Yeah. Is is it's on VOD? Oh, I think it's oh, gone. Yeah. <laughs> I, oh, think it's, I think it's off VOD. <laughs> it's like you blink and it's gone, right? Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you see that on Netflix fairly soon. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Well, well, September Canadian though, not American. Yeah, not American. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want that on there. Well, September sixth, uh, video demand is a hard target too. Oh really? Right away, huh? Scott Atkins, yeah. That's gonna be all right. That's gonna be really good, I think. Well, the trailer was good. The trailer was good. Good, good in the sense like I think it'll be it won't suck. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, uh, I know. Like a lot of guys were bitching on all the um, like on Facebook and all that, saying that well, why does it have to be a hard target? Make it something else. Mm. But then if they do, it's gonna be like, well, this is too much like a hard target. Yeah. Why couldn't they just call it hard target? Yeah. You're, so never, you're, you're not gonna win. You're not. You're never gonna make the internet happy. No, you'll happy. never make the internet happy, no. right? Everybody's fact, always gonna bitch about it. Well, yeah. the key thing is that they, they cast a perfect guy in the role. I mean, he, Scott he, Adkins he, needs more consistent work. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a guy who needs more I know, consistent absolutely work. Absolutely. The guy who has the look of the future James Bond, but he can yeah. will never be considered for James Bond. <laughs> His yeah. window is closing pretty fast. Yeah. We talked about this last time you were here. Yeah. It's like he's not. He's not gonna be around that much longer no. as a bankable. Like young male lead. Yeah. No, I don't think so. He's our, he's our age. I think yeah. 36, 37-ish, yeah. right? I think he's maybe a little bit older than we are. Yeah. Oh, is that yeah, right? I believe he's like 40. And uh, oh, honestly, wow. like, yeah. I know you. T- I, I took a chance on Rekill. Oh, man. Yeah, I just couldn't watch it. Yeah, really? Rekill was garbage. Rekill. Yeah. Uh, now, is, this is not a Scott Atkins movie. It, it is. It's a Scott it Atkins is. movie. That well, is he, is he, was he the lead in that? No, he's not the yeah. lead. He's, mm-hmm. one, he's one of the it's an ensemble cast, but the thing is they filmed it six, seven years ago, mm-hmm. and it just literally came out like a year ago. Oh, because he's got enough buzz and B movies now. Um, oh, I, I hope that's not the reason. I don't, I don't know. If that <laughs> shelved, <laughs> yeah. shelved, because shelved. now his name's got enough buzz maybe, in the B industry. Maybe that could be the reason why yeah. they came out. Who knows? Could be. Right. Because like there was a lot of Statham movies coming out, mm. like out, like literally yeah. out of the woodwork. Yeah. Because he that. had a few roles, like Expendables yeah. popped up, yeah, and then they showed up. Like yeah. Wild card yeah. and. And Which, it, yeah. Hey man, it, Wild Card is phenomenal. Yeah. Is it? Wild Card is incredible. If you haven't seen it, do yourself a personal favor. Oh. Like sit down and just you know what, tell yourself, do me a favor, me. Man, I'm gonna hook you up. You watch Wild Card. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you Written by William it. Goldman. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's it's not like a bad script. It's a remake of a Burt Reynolds movie. Yeah. Um, oh. What was that one called?
of Burt Reynolds in a still when he goes to a hotel room to like bust a couple guys up. Mm-hmm. I told him it was like a Doctor Strange movie from the 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it you or somebody else? And they were like, holy shit, I had no idea Burt Reynolds had a Doctor Strange movie. Oh, man. The last movie I saw uh, of Burt Reynolds was uh, the Gator movies. Yeah, you know, way back when. Yeah, they were phenomenal. Yeah, because yeah. I, I didn't watch them until like I was watching Archer, and Archer is... He mentions Gator. He loves Gator. <laughs> over and over again. Over and over again. I'm like, I have to watch this movie. And oh, they're, I they're pretty it again, good. I'm like, oh, I'd love, love to see a remake of Archer. And, uh... <laughs> oh, man. Heat. That's right. Heat. Yeah, 86 or 87. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heat. Which which itself wasn't terrible. No, that's kind of like a cult classic yeah. in a sense, right? And um, it is... I mean, William Goldman wrote a great script for both movies. Yeah. It's almost... I wouldn't say shot for shot, but it's definitely like scene for scene. Right, right, right. Uh, of of heat, yeah, and it's good. It's really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I've seen Heat, but I haven't seen Wild Card. Yeah, because like you said, he's coming out movies every two seconds. And it I, was yeah, it was a tidal wave of Jason Statham. Yeah, oh yeah, Jason Statham. That guy's um, yeah, that guy needs to, to tone it down a little bit. Yeah, um, the, is it like the personality or the movies coming out? The movies uh, coming, the out. coming yeah. out. Because yeah. if you look at the box office of the movies, I mean they're like twenty, thirty million. It's not like they make a hundred million, twenty, twenty million dollar grosses. These movies. No. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. Know what I'm saying. No. What's the budget too? Yeah, right? that's the thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean the budget can't be that low. No, no, because like production quality is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And that costs money. Yeah, exactly. Like making yeah. a movie look like that still costs yeah, money. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah they look like like cheap ass Luke Besson movies or something. But yeah, he, yeah. That, that's a, that's a great way to put it. Yeah. They look like cheap Luke Besson movies. But it, it does look high end, right? Yeah. But if you're making twenty thirty million at the box office. I mean, yeah. I think as long as he gets paid, he doesn't give a shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah those are those are like you know, to cover his like. You well, know, they're an extension yeah. of his training. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you, I'm thinking, how can those make money if you get 30 million? You yeah. I, mean? I, bet like, you, I bet you anything, those are not for like the US market. Those are probably for the European market. Probably. Yeah. yeah more than likely, you're right. Yeah. I mean, it's like the English speaking European market, and anybody doesn't mind reading a Jason Statham subtitle. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. yeah, it, helps, it helps in the American market, too. Because mm-hmm. sometimes I have no idea what the fuck he's saying. It's because he's always like, he's always angry. Yeah, he's always got he's that like, angry you know, look at that. But, but besides, what's going to happen here? Besides yeah. some parts of Europe, does he really have an international following? No. International following? Like, uh, besides, like Europe, besides outside like, Europe, does he? Out, have, outside of like the Euro, really not. I can't no, see him I doing well in I, Kazakhstan. Yeah, or like, China, like exactly. yeah, or, or like he's not doing well in India. Fuck that. No <laughs> yeah, he's not that, like no. gigantic posters no. up of Statham yeah, in India. Know, I'm, I'm pretty no. sure India has its own version of Jason Statham. But here's the I thing, mean, though, <laughs> that <laughs> industry man probably has 25, and they they do. We they know do. they do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you knew Dolph was big in Europe. Yeah, Dolph was big in Europe. Look, look at look at Dolph though. Yeah, he's the the quintessential European man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he is, yeah, yeah. He's alpha male. After, more than, uh, amazingly alpha male. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, he, that, it's from that one scene in, in Shodan Little Tokyo, right? It's from every scene in Shodan Little Tokyo. <laughs> every scene. <laughs> okay. He's alpha male in the sense that an alpha male is supposed to be, though. Yeah. Like the the guy that you would look to. He's not the guy pushing everybody else around. No. You know, like the whole like chest out gorilla, big monkey plumping your chest, yeah. making sure guys know you're hardcore. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a punk man. That's yeah. the guy. That's the guy you tell your son like one day like that's the guy you should aspire Absolutely. to be. Yeah, Dolph. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Dolph. Educated, good looking. Luca, uh, when he was here, ripped to hell. Yeah. Ripped to hell. Yeah. Jacked. Yeah. With a couple of black belts. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Luke was. Uh, Luke mentioned that like if he knew Dolph Lundgren as a kid, if he's like if that was your uncle and he was that guy, he's the one that like when you hear he's coming to your country, you clean your room because he might show up and tell you you did a good job. Yeah. Absolutely. He's that guy. Wow. <laughs> you want to impress wow. him? Like that's his idea of like Dolph Lundgren because yeah. he grew up with like, that idea that Dolph was like that guy. Yeah. Fucking Dolph is the guy. He was he man. Yeah. He killed. He killed Apollo Creed. Yeah. Well, yep. he's also the Punisher. Be he's also the Punisher. Uh, yeah, let's, let's not forget, he is the, oh, he is the Punisher. He is the Punisher. <laughs> what I wouldn't have given to get him in the Daredevil series as the Vietnam vet Frank Castle oh my God. from oh, Max, like the Marvel fuck. Max Vietnam vet yeah. Frank Castle. Oh, my God. That's a, that Dude, I feel like they, they missed something. Yeah, yeah they, they did Black Ops. Like, Yeah. I mean, he's that guy. Like, I mean, if you have that um, that version of Frank, like, did you read the comic at all? Oh, yeah. The Marvel Max version? Oh, the Mar- those are the yeah. best. Easily, that best Max. Where he right? is like 65 years yeah. old. He's war hardened. Yep. He's street hardened. Street he's hardened, just yep. like living in a bunker, eating baked beans and just yep. doing push ups. Yeah. Like, at one sequence in Valley, I think it's in Valley Forge, Valley Forge. I always go back to that as my, that, that's my favorite, one of my favorite stories. Outside of like, the Barracuda. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, the Barracuda. The Barracuda yep. was like two, two of them, right? Well, a trilogy with the Barracuda story itself. Mm-hmm. But outside of those, when I think uh, the guy who sends the team after castles, like all this guy does is eat and train mm-hmm. and then wait for things to happen so he can react. Yeah. So like if while you're sitting here smoking a cigarette and watching TV, he's doing push-ups. Yeah. You know, while you're like telling your wife she's pretty and getting groceries in the house, he's doing squats. Like that's all he's doing. And then at nighttime, he patrols the streets and fucks up the mafia. Yeah. Like, man, 65 years old and doing that. Like, yeah. That's a hardcore son bitch. Ye
I've said it before that not only is it the best Mac series I've ever read, it's the most true to character series I've ever read. Yeah, absolutely. Well I, said. Yeah, yeah, absolutely I think so. well said. Yeah. Better, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a comic series that was more true to character. Fucking no. right. I know. Totally yeah. That really yeah, is that all. That one where the, um, uh, that issue, the one that was drawn by the same guys who did Preacher, with remember uh, Steve Dillon. Steve Dillon. Yeah. yeah. The, um, the the Deadshot one. The Not Deadshot one. The Bullseye. Bullseye. One. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No. You mean the Jason Aaron one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. fuck. That's something. That's like. Your favorite movie. You can read that over and over yeah, again, exactly. and it, it gets really better good. every time you watch. For me, it's like Weird Science with the Lost Boys. I can watch it over and over again, and it never gets boring. I I like that you said Weird Science because I actually literally burnt that tape out. Oh really? Really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, like I watched it so much, the tape stopped working. Right. Yeah. Like Weird Science was one of those movies for me, and not just because it was like you know the hot girl and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Man, there's some wicked jokes in that. Oh, 100 crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the funniest movies I've ever even seen. Even the opening scene is fantastic. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, check us out. Yeah. <laughs> We're dicks. <Yeah. laughs> what a great movie. I guess yeah. one of the funniest John Hughes movies Absolutely. ever. Actually, one of the one of my favorite scenes is when they were in the uh, the jazz club. Yeah. And they're hanging out with all those black guys. Oh, and he gets and, really drunk. Yeah, and he's yeah. he talking to those guys, and the, one of the guys is actually um is uh that black guy from american ninja <laughs> oh uh what's his name um steve uh, steve james steve james yeah. steve james, james. Ninja. by the way oh, back in those days incredible yeah. oh yeah. he was the michael j white of his time michael white, oh, yeah. Yeah. all right all right absolutely i remember on the beach exactly on the beach with the, in the american ninja 2 when he had his white red shorts on and he's been beating the shit out of like ninjas who have no training whatsoever <laughs> mm. was he the one in weird science now was that god it's been a little while where he's like uh in the party sequence when the not not Robert Downey Jr. the other one is like uh, he he asks him what yeah. do you want to drink? It's like uh, just give me the whole bottle. It's like, I'll tell you what, you bend over, and I'll shove this whole bottle straight oh, up I, your yeah. ass. I think, I, <laughs> like, I think you know what you mean? was that him? You know what? I'm gonna find out. You gotta find I out. I gotta find that out. Well, you obviously know Kelly LeBrock was or who she turned out to be after, right? Oh yeah, everybody knows everybody who she turned out to be. Everybody knows where the her career went. Yeah. yeah, and then didn't go. It didn't go. Yeah. Yeah. Rough man, because she does not. She did not do well. No. Like not was that was it was what was which one was it? Uh, not out for justice. No, no, hard to kill. Hard, hard to, to kill. kill and hard to kill. Was that the apex of her career? Uh, I would say so. She that was, was it. Like he was like the co lead, right? I mean, that's kind of like the last thing she did too. I think, I think all the people who worked on. It. I think all people who worked on Hard to Kill was that. That was a high point in their career. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> was, and still is. <laughs> actually, yeah, no, not true. Because David Michael Frank still did movies, uh, composed movies after that. As good as Hard to Kill, though? Well, he did Showdown the same year. Uh, no, yeah. That's Apples and Oranges. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. That's uh... Not to mention, he also did um, uh, the Mark DeCosco's movie, Only the Strong. Oh, I, sh- I just ended my condolences. <laughs> I completely forgot about that. Now that you said it, I can see the poster in my head. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. No, yeah, no arm up. <laughs> yeah. He's like on a rooftop or something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or in the air, whatever it takes. Yeah, where, is, whatever he is. I don't know, is Mark DeCascos, he just he irritates me for some reason. Yeah, well, he's a legit martial artist. His dad, Al oh, yeah. DeCascos, is pretty well respected, right? Yeah, yeah. Mark DeCascos is not a joke by any means. Oh, yeah. I, mean, no, I think I, it's like, well, go ahead. I don't know, like, I just want him to get his ass kicked by, uh, what's this guy? Who's the guy who does Blood Fist? Daniel Bernhardt? Uh, no. Oh, no, that's Don Drake Lust. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, Daniel Bernhardt did Blood Sport 2. Two guys who almost look exactly like Blood Sport 2. Yeah. Oh yeah, because two guys who look almost exactly like each other just fight to the death. Yeah, yeah. Well, Danny Bernard did a great job in John Wick as a as a main martial arts henchman for uh, that Russian that mob guy. Get out! Yeah, oh yeah, you man, know that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, I've only seen John Wick like twice, I think. In oh, the really? Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. I gotta I gotta go pick that up again. Yeah, actually, um, I just he's um he was also in the Matrix Reloaded as yes, well, right? right. Mm. He's, he's, he's the, the first uh, agent. I don't remember any of that movie. Yeah, and yeah, then um, not many people do. Yeah. And what was it? Uh, um, I just watched. Uh, what was that movie of his? Um. Uh, Oh, uh, that sci-fi movie that, that he only does sci-fi movies, but that one where he's a he's a cyborg. Not Nemesis. Nemesis three. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not Nemesis. <laughs> Nemesis three. Oh my god! It got like honestly, I was watching. It. I, I I seriously started crying. I'm like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Wow. But then I, the more, more I watch it, I'm like, I love like you said. You know those moments where you love bad movies. Everyone has those moments. So like you're just like yeah. you know, a movie's so bad. You're like, you know what? It's like eating unhealthy food. Yeah. You know, you know it's bad for you, but fuck, it just tastes. So you're gonna good. watch it anyway. I'm gonna watch it yeah. anyway, and yeah. I watched it in its entirety, and I'm pretty sure that all of us with the camcorder could have made a better movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A camcorder and like a decent clamp light. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. could have made a better, better, well lit movie. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's it was it was hilarious. But that was nothing strange in that era, though. No, that's it, no, yeah, no. that's it. I love that area. But yeah. that's kind of the beauty of that era. In a sense. Yeah, that, yeah, that really is like that weird straight to video martial arts movie era. Like mm-hmm. there were so many of those. It was almost like um, I remember what was the first one that uh, Revenge of the Ninja. Mm-hmm. 
with uh, uh, Shoko Sugi? That was part three. That was part three. Yeah. Because yeah. was it? What was the first one? One and two. I've got the names. I mean, but that's Ninja Three. Was oh, that Ninja, no, Ninja Three? The domination. Ninja Three. The domination. Yeah. yeah. Domination. Might take with, that with a chick, right? Yeah. 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 That, yeah. That was um. That cover was very misleading. Yeah. 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 That was not. She was not a badass ninja. Not at all. At all. Honestly, at I could have yeah. backhanded her, and that would have been the end of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. But those movies, though, like they weren't mm-hmm. great by any means. No, no, no. Not at all. But, but they're, they had they're their, classics. They had their charm. Yeah, they had their charm. Absolutely. They're yeah. Classic, classic I, movies. I think there's only a handful of ninja. Like American Ninja ran that industry completely. Oh yeah. Yeah. Everything happened, I think, because of American Ninja. I think so too. And I think they, they, yeah. they, that probably came from the. Um, Revenge of the Ninja was the first one. Enter the Ninja was number two. Is number two. Yeah. The Ninja Three: The Domination. That's right. Yeah. But yeah, Revenge of Revenge of the Ninja is the one. Which is the one with this kid? Um, God, I haven't seen him in uh, a long time. This is gonna be with Kane Kosugi. Well, he was also Kane Kosugi. The, the Kane... He was the kid. I remember, there's a whole sequence where he's running from the street, the, the bully kids, you know, and end up fighting him in a in a little street fight there. I don't remember. Then he fights the chick too. The kid fights the girl. Yeah, Kane Kosugi yeah. was also Shokosugi also brought him along in Black Eagle. He's in a lot of his movies. Yeah, yeah a yeah. lot of it. Ken Kosugi was not like a, a second-rate martial artist by any means. No, like, no, even no. as a little kid, he was a real destroyer. Yeah, he was, yeah. Yeah. Well, he did a great job in the Scott Atkins movie. That he, but he fought Scott Atkins. In, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what the fuck? That was the other ninja one. Yeah. <laughs> that was um, uh, Shadow of a Tear. Ninja 2, yeah. Yeah. Shadow of a Tear. He was incredible in that. Yeah. What's ninja movie? Oh, ninja. <laughs> <laughs> ninja, yeah. <laughs> Shadow of a Tear was surprisingly good. It was very surprisingly yeah. good. Co- the choreography was amazing. Yeah. Dark man, and that's I think that's like the lost art in in big budget movies. Yeah, because a lot of people go to, they go to movies to see enter to be either like if you're going to movies to get entertained, you should appreciate the art of just like watching martial artists just go at it. Yes, and um, yeah, I, I agree with you. That's yeah. um, that's been lost, and so they can't appreciate the the work that goes into it. Exactly. Yeah. You said it first. You said the most underrated director in the world is Isaac Florentine. The most undirected combat, like yeah. martial arts director, or even like. Like scene plotter, as far as like, like getting a scene set up, man, he's incredible, man. Absolutely, mm-hmm. fantastic. I feel like you should take every martial arts, every movie that's an action movie that has got any sequence of two guys doing any kind of hand to hand combat. I don't care if Doug Lyman's directing it, Paul Greengrass, who's awful, I don't oh, care if he's directing him. it, yeah. Michael Bay, whatever. Yeah, you just get Isaac Florentine to come in, do a second unit day, and just shoot that fight scene and just walk away. Yeah, you know, you can light it, you can do whatever you want to do, but Isaac Florentine shoots and choreographs that scene. Yeah. yeah. Or I'm, directs it. I'm glad that you say Paul Greengrass is a. Uh, um, he's garbage. He's garbage. Yeah. He's hot garbage. Yeah, you think because he's made he makes one type of movie. Yeah. Yeah, and like I didn't mind the original Born trilogy. I'm like those that was good, mm-hmm. but. Uh, well, the first one. The first one. That's yeah. Doug Liman. Doug Liman. That's why it looks so good. Yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, uh, yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. yeah true, like yeah. the thing is with the the shaky handicam oh, and stuff like that. Yeah. It's become it's become. The sad thing is, it's become industry standard. It is. Yeah. It yeah. Is. yeah. It's it's like John Woo with two guns or. Mm-hmm. Um, the bullet time or whatever it is, yep. right? That shaky handicam. It's like um, you're trying to either be Paul Greengrass or I'm blaming Paul B- Greengrass because of that whole. That whole I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. Because I mean, it really wasn't a big deal until he you showed know, up. Yeah. And all of I a sudden, agree. like that second born movie, which did well, because I mean, it was a good story. Yeah. And for the most part, it was all right. Now, the third one, man, he just went off the rails. Yeah. And I always say, like, the, the born prequel, Green Zone. Like, when he shot Green Zone, mm-hmm. which is not a born prequel, I'm just fucking around because yeah. it's a stupid movie. <laughs> yeah. Anybody who's listening who doesn't know, don't that don't go watch it. Yeah. Don't but watch Green Zone. I don't just watch I watched Zone. it two weeks ago and just I was just like, oh my god. That last fight in the dark with Shaky Cam. Mm-hmm. And it's a it's a combat sequence of hand to hand stuff happening in the dark. Yeah. And it's like twenty minutes long, man. There's a twenty minute long scene that happens in the dark with Shaky Cam. Yeah. Why am I even sitting through it? I yeah. mean just take a nap. Yeah. Just have a nap. When it's done, get your friend to nudge you awake. Yeah. And then you can see what's going on. Did anybody, in the, did anybody in the theater Ouch. have like a seizure or anything? Or? <laughs> Fuck, man. How could you? You couldn't yeah, see you anything. Can't see yeah. Nothing. yeah, you can't, right? There's, yeah, it's, it's, you're it's, seizure free because <laughs> you can't see shit. Wow. Seizure free because you can't see shit, man. No, it was awful, man. I didn't like that that sequence at all. And as far as a movie goes, it was pretty forgettable. Oh, like, I don't think I remember any of that I movie at all. Of it no. All. Reporter Zero. and Intel and, you know, him being Mar- it's David Webb. David, it's Webb, the David yeah. Webb movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, yeah, and I think even the new one, it's like um, I think this new Jason Bourne movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would, I would, I think it's safe to say that the movie did not have to be made. Yeah, it's unnecessary. It's oh, unnecessary. Course, yeah. No, and uh, they're just trying to kickstart a franchise. No, that's yeah. You're right. Yeah. And um, same thing. It has like you know, uh, just because what was the tagline? Just because you, uh, just because you it's remember like you everything. Think you know him. Yeah, it's like you, yeah. Just because you remember everything doesn't mean you know everything. Yeah. And I'm like. That's your that's your Kickstarter. Yeah, 
and uh, and it, uh, all, all I want to see is that last the car chase. I can watch that on YouTube when the when it comes out. Exactly. And, and that, after that, I'm done. Or you really yeah. you could Wikipedia that thing. Yeah. And who's that? Aziz Ansari, right? Yeah. He's like he'll watch he'll he'll Wikipedia the entire thing and he won't read the last paragraph and he'll just watch the last paragraph of a shitty movie. It's like yeah. it's like they saw the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God he did not spend money for this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the truth, man. Yeah, wow. it's totally. It's like he yeah. he wow. really nailed it when I when he said that I'm like motherfucker I'm doing this for every shitty movie. Yeah. That Absolutely. all my friends I, bitch about. I never thought about that. That's yeah, he's like, I just Wikipedia the first chunk. Yeah. I get the gist. Yeah. I know who's in it. I know what's in Europe. So I'm gonna put all those pieces together in my head. So how how much how, how like how how does he know how, what part? To I think he waits until like that last paragraph and he just kind of hits the fast forward from beginning to where he, think, he thinks he's caught up yeah. and he leaves it. Yeah. <laughs> he just watches it from that's there. Amazing. <laughs> it's the best way to go, man. Wow. That guy is gold. Yeah, I have to admit that's actually... Uh, that's fantastic, that's, man. That's, yeah, man. I agree with that. I agree with that uh, methodology. Completely. I think it's Aziz Ansari who did that. I, I, I can totally yeah, see I'm fairly certain that. he was a comedian who talked about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's the way to it's go. It's definitely a cheap way to go, to, and he's brown, so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, I, I, I mean, totally, that is. I can see where that in his heritage. Genesis, yeah, exactly. Save your money. He's like us. <laughs> yeah, don't blow your money on shitty movies. I'm gonna help you out right now. That's everyone should follow that because that would kill a lot of these crappy movies that studios put out. Hey, speaking of crappy movies that got killed, how do you feel about Ghostbusters not getting a sequel? Great. I just read. Yeah. That, I just read that article on um, on Yahoo today, um, mm-hmm. and they said. For it to make back its budget, it has to hit three hundred million. Yeah, and it's not even close. Like worldwide. Worldwide. Yeah, and it's not even close. I think it's at one seventy or something. Are, that, are they? Are they even that high? Huh? Yeah. yeah no. You know what? You're right because I think they're eighty three million off their mark. Yeah. And they've already slowed down. Yeah. Like and considerably. Considerably. Yeah. And Sony will take a massive hit on that. Yeah. And uh, they will. Um, the game was guard because it, I don't know why they do this. They always follow up the, the movie with the game if it's a big franchise. Mm-hmm. No one wants to play a Ghostbusters game. No, I want, I'd rather play the eight bit one on NES than play the uh, one on Xbox. Or that a, yeah. weird but fun. Yeah, it's, it's a stupid game, but like just I'd, it, it's more fun. Mm-hmm. And so, so, so the Ghostbusters budget was one forty four, but that doesn't include marketing. Marketing. Will oh double, yeah, marketing yeah, will no. almost double the cost. Yeah, absolutely. What is it? Marketing is half the budget plus right? So it's hundred forty million budget. 70 million marketing is that how it usually works uh no usually it's uh, well if, if correct if i'm wrong i think it's double because they no, said it has to be that, that seems that seems excessive if it's for a worldwide release yeah that seems really excessive to be yeah. double yeah that's too much man i would look at it like it's it's got to be at least yeah, half i right? think it half right okay so, so if you took like so yeah they said they said for it to be to um i'm just going by these numbers but i like said they said for it for to it for it to break even, mm-hmm. it has to make three hundred million worldwide. Yeah, well, it's, yeah. right yeah. now its budget's one forty four. Let's say there's seventy million in marketing, right? So they okay. get two ten roughly, right? Sure. So one eighty one million is a worldwide box office. Yeah. But in order to make that, you said three hundred. That could be because the side deals, you know, that could be that could be made on the side. Mm-hmm. X amount of money has to one hundred million dollars. You have to pay this actress this much, perhaps. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, well, yeah. is it because like the um because yeah because the actors say you know what I'll take my 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 payday is going to be on the back end. On the back end, yeah. Do they still do that? They do. Yeah. They they, they do, but it's not huge. I mean, there yeah. there are certain guys who have the swing and the pull to get I, that. Yeah, you know what thing is? I think they, um, the guy who started that, or the person who benefited from that the most, Jack was Nicholson. Jack Nicholson from Batman. It was that, yeah. Yeah, he. Could, I know, like Tom Hanks made a killing on something as well, right? Same with Tom Cruise. On which one? Uh, Last Samurai. Wow. Yeah. Um, hmm. A couple other ones said he he took just a percentage of the profits. Yeah. Yeah. I think maybe maybe, maybe am I. Too, because he, he's always a producer <clears throat> as well. Yeah. But a lot of the movies, it was, like, it was the common thing to do. He knows me a blockbuster. Take the fucking percentage. Yeah, exactly. Cause, yeah, because yeah. remember, Jack Nicholson knew um, that this that Batman was gonna be the biggest movie of all time. Yeah. And then he said, "I want the box." He he wanted a percentage of the box of the. He took a lower bo- cut. The actual. Yeah. yeah. And then he took and then for merchandising as well. And merchandising for Batman the original, we all know that that was just that was everything. No one has ever seen anything like that. Yeah, that was pretty gonzo. Like, yeah. There was there was a lot of stuff. I mean McDonald's all the way to like shoes, fanny packs, like yeah. you name it. You they had their stamp on yeah. it. Yeah. And the thing is, you didn't you didn't need to see the word. You just need to see that black and the logo. Symbol. Yeah. Yeah. And that was that that's the best form of marketing. Yeah. Yeah. Warner Brothers did a really good job with that. Yeah. No. Well, that was that was pretty pretty incredible, but just what you like. I haven't seen Ghostbusters. I don't want to see Ghostbusters. You told me it sucks. I'm pretty sure I was gonna hate it anyway. Yeah, you're not missing um, out. It's all female cast. I that doesn't excite me. Ooh, that's no, no, that's fine. But yeah. I'll tell you right now, that is not the problem. No, I know. I agree. That's not yeah. the problem. But that, like, if yeah, the reviews were really good. Mm-hmm. I would have given it a chance for sure. Yeah. But initially, I wasn't excited. Okay. So, yeah. So you've seen the movie, right? Yes. Okay. So this is what I've heard. I heard that the sorry, Roger, do you have any more? Yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, like, I mean, the fact that I was excited that it wasn't like uh, the, some of the real cast returning, mm-hmm. apart from the cameos, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. That, that didn't excite me. The cameos were terrible. There you go, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, they were terrible cameos. And then top of that, the reviews are garbage. 
Mm-hmm. So it's like I, I wasn't excited before. Now I'm even less. Yeah. So to see it, right? yeah, I think the reason why I didn't want to, I don't want to go see it is the is the fact that it took them it, they, they they were trying to get the original four to make the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and well, three the, until until yeah yeah. And so they were they, they, it took them so long to make the movie, and when they finally decided to make the movie, they made this. Yeah. And so um, the reason why I'm really against this movie is because um, from what I've heard is that like the actresses like they're fine. Mm-hmm. Like they're good actresses. You know, yeah, they, 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 yeah, they're they, all actually yeah, like they very really funny. Good. And yeah, I, I love good. Kristen Wiig. I like, yeah. I know, like, I'm not a huge like that. Who's that overweight lady? Uh, Melissa uh, McCarthy. Yeah. McCarthy. That's yeah. 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 yeah, her. I'm not a huge fan of her, but like yeah. that. But that's me. That's personal taste. But like, um, my problem is, is that they said the director did. Like, it, it all Paul Fag. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, did Paul not. Paul Fag is awful. Yeah, I heard it was just awful. Like uh, the movies wasn't directed properly. Like, it didn't look like properly put together. No, it's it's just a bunch of things that happen that don't flow. Like it's not it's not a good movie. Mm-hmm. Like I'm it's and again like it's got nothing nothing to do. I know a lot of guys like well it's kind of mis- it's uh, misandric you know it's got a lot of like man hate to it. Really not a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean I know like, they they have their little gimmicks like Chris Hemsworth the, he's a dumb blonde and he does some stupid shit that are like just characters wouldn't do whatever. Well, was he the focus? Like was he a no, big part? No, of it? no, way. no. So he he's was... he's in it and he's got like a part that gets bigger, mm-hmm. but by no means is he like the main focus to yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. So he would, yeah. was, was he? Would you, would you say that his screen time and like how much he was allotted to do mm-hmm. was the same as Janine's in the uh, original Ghostbusters? Yes, but he's really like a amalgam of Janine and um and Dana and what's his name Rick Moranis. He's kind of that that guy. He kind of he kind of takes all their characters in one. Okay, yeah. so so it saves on. So he's comedy, actors, he's yeah. comedy relief. Basically. <laughs> he's comedy, comedy relief. relief yeah, and yeah. At the same time, he kind of ends up being what they were in the movie. Oh, okay. Where like you know things happen to him, mm-hmm. and and like he's not the the Dana character where like they go to they go to his place and find out that he's being possessed. Yeah. That doesn't happen at all. Oh, okay. But he ends up getting possessed and then becoming that like because you've seen the trailers how he's the bad guy. Yeah. No, he gets possessed by the bad guy, and then ends up being the main villain. Oh, I see. Interesting. Yeah. So oh. he is like a mix of all those characters. Oh, okay. But um, no, man, like it's not like it's just a bunch of things that happen. Like is there is nothing I can tell you. It's like, oh, yeah, no. So in the beginning, this happened. And then there was these guys who went to this house and then the house was haunted and they got possessed and then they became bad guys and the Ghostbusters teamed up to get them. No, nothing like that. There's no story. So there's if I asked you like, okay, um, which scene blew, which, which scene was like, oh, you got to see it because of this part. There's nothing, right? No, I mean, the intro is really good. Mm-hmm. There's like, I know, um, like Gavin McInnes, we kind of talked about how he had a, uh, a little, like he's got Rebel, Rebel Media. Yeah. And he was talking about how in the beginning the guy shits his pants because he gets super scared. And like they make a point to make sure, you know, the guy shit his pants. I don't think any of it was like, I don't think it was necessarily a man hating moment. They just need a funny character. He's a, he's a funny guy who played the uh, the guy who does shit his pants when the ghost gets him in the beginning. Like yeah. the library ghost. Mm-hmm. That's essentially what it is. Yeah. And it's a funny scene. It's a good scene. But the movie itself just had no pop. There's wow. nothing to it. It's just it's just a bunch of things that happen. Oh, I see. And they, well, they don't shows, make any sense. In the box office too, right? It really does. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest problem is yeah. like women went in to be like, okay, let's just see what this is about. You know, we're going to get our heroes. And they deserve better than this. Like little girls deserve better than this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to make heroes for little girls, go watch Wonder Woman because that trailer looks friggin' phenomenal. Yeah, that Wonder Woman. Yeah. And that's that's the one thing I wanted to t- uh, touch upon like when we... Uh, when we go to move, move to another topic because mm-hmm. um, uh, I personally think from what I saw from Comic-Con yeah. and the, re- the reaction that I'm hearing and the news that I've been reading. Did you go to Comic-Con? No, but I, I was following okay. it completely. Yeah, because uh, you were in the area at the time, right? Uh, or or was, somewhat? Were you in San, I, San Francisco? I was in San Francisco from J- July 22nd okay. to... Okay, so you were like that was not close enough. Not all. close enough, yeah. yeah. And um, from what I heard that um, uh, DC killed it at yeah. Comic-Con. Oh, I'll see that. Yeah, yeah, I'll buy that. And um, because of Justice League, Wonder Woman, they looked mm-hmm. really good. Um, and Marvel was like... Um, They've really got nothing to show this nothing year. Nothing to show this year. Yeah. Yeah. And well, what is coming out from Marvel besides Doctor Strange? Uh, this it's year? Really, oh, I, don't, Thor, I think I that's about it. Thor, Thor is Ragnarok? getting made, yeah. Yeah, I think there was a teaser. There was well, a small teaser for yeah. Thor. Did you guys see it? I saw like the um, you know the YouTube leaked, the, the, leaked the, footage type thing. Yeah, I yeah. saw that's the one I saw too. Yeah, yeah where's Hulk in the in the in the woods, right? Yeah, yeah, which looks it looks cool. Yeah, but yeah. I've I've heard from many interviews they're going for a comedic tone of this movie. Yeah, I remember is, you telling me that. It's yesterday. like a buddy movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean I I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because let's face it, like Lethal Weapon is funny. Right, but and it's a buddy movie. The best, that's that's a little different though. I, it is different, but I think that's what they're going to end up really going for. I don't think they're. I mean, he's a comedy director, the guy who's doing it. Yeah, Taifa Waititi, whatever his yeah, name is. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're but right. I don't think we're going to get like a a hard string movie. I don't think we're going to get like a comedy. I think we're going to like a good balance of of in the middle. Yeah, because yeah, because yeah. Marvel's not going to screw up with because Marvel has that formula 
Right. Yeah, they've kind of got it down now. They can balance it. Yeah. And, and uh, um, was it Kevin Feige? Kevin Feige, I've got a lot of faith in that guy. Yeah. Like yeah. he's he's a good godfather yeah, of that right. of that universe, right? Been for a long yeah. Time, he's been around in that universe a long time. Since day one, really. Right? Yeah, because like him and Avi Arad, they had Spider Man, and I think they both or was only Avi Arad for X Men. Only Avi Arad for X Men. He was I, only I know, Avi Arad. Yeah, it was yeah. Kevin Feige for X. I know that for a fact. And then is that, um, is that right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's been around like almost since the beginning, I'd say. At least for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Well, that's what I mean. By he's been around for this what, universe day one. That's what I mean, day one, yeah. Yeah. So that's like, what, 13, 14 years? No, eight years? 2000, oh, uh, Two thousand. Eight or nine years? Eight or nine years. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it hasn't okay. been a decade yet for that. Oh, okay. yeah. I was thinking, yeah. Okay. okay. So he's he's been doing it like pretty much himself, like yeah. overseeing the entire thing himself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Keep going there, buddy. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, I've got faith in that. But yeah, yeah, like with Justice League, though, it seems like, I don't know if this is Zack Snyder finally getting it, but it seems like now they've got their like their world together. Like JLA looks really good. Mm-hmm. And Wonder Woman looks incredible. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not surprised they were able to knock it out of the park like that. Now, do you think, um, uh, I was thinking about this the other day. Now, do you think, when do you think um, Marvel's going to have, do you think Marvel ever suffer from a little bit of fatigue? From people are like, you know what, this is um, after like fa- when Phase Three is over, once Infinity yeah. War is over, do you think that people are going to start once you have to get new actors? Because I know eventually um, it's going to have to happen. Now, do you think that Marvel's going to be? Is, do you think that whole idea of like them running the comic universe, yeah, and the comic movies and stuff like that? Do you think that's going to be tiring to the audience the same? What do you think? I think um, I would have thought yeah, but when we saw Civil War, mm. like we made a really good like Raji I, agrees I think with me, and you made the point yourself to me I think that if you took the suits out, mm-hmm. the superhero costumes uh, out, yeah. Yep. That is just a story about two Black Ops teams going going at it with each other. Yeah, that's fantastic. Good point. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's like the Expendables versus the new Expendables. Yep. Yeah, you know, and they they don't like the way the Expendables do things because those guys are too violent, they're too rough, and they cause problems. Mm-hmm. You know, because nobody really had. I mean, you could take the flying stuff away and make them helicopters or snipers. Like all the flight stuff could be just like a sniper battle, mm-hmm. and all the ground stuff can be like you know the infantry guys, and it just turns into like a Black Ops movie, and it was still really good. Fantastic. Yeah. But do you think? Um, let's say if you have a. Uh, do but so you think the star power will not does not matter? No, I don't think so. I think you need to have a good story that's relatable. That's what I was gonna say. Like, yeah. It's the, you don't necessarily need everything. superheroes. Yeah. yeah, the story makes or breaks everything. Everything. Yeah. yeah. But so, do you think the that that will not push the that won't drive up the the dramatic moments? What do you mean? Like you know, like how like you know when you see Chris Evans and uh and Tony Stark, like Chris mm-hmm. Evans and uh, Robert Downey Jr. talking about like Sokovia or whatever it is, yeah. right? Like if you had like actors who weren't of that caliber, like star power, for example, yeah. Right? Do you think that? that people will turn away from that movie then? No, they'll definitely no. need to get, like, good actors. Yeah. Like, no matter what, you'll have to get yeah. a good cast, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think if you've got the right guys and you build a good relationship between the two, I mean, you can't, you couldn't have done that Sokovia, con- like, uh, confrontation in the first movie. No. Yeah. Like, Civil War could not have been the first one. No, no, exactly. No, we've exactly. seen a relationship build up over the course of a few movies now. Exactly. Okay. So we're like, we want them to be friends. Yeah. And when they turn on each other, it hurts us as an audience. Like, no, man. Like, Iron Man and Cap are buddies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They can't fight. Yeah. And we've we've got a relationship with both actors now as those characters. Yep. Okay. I think that's what I think that's the main key of the whole thing. Exactly. Okay. And even if the, if the story was garbage, it could have wouldn't matter if I think it was Downey Jr. or Evans. It it's why we didn't care about Batman versus Superman. Exactly. We didn't give a shit about these guys at all. Number yeah. one, I don't think. I mean, not to knock on. I know I knock on it a lot. I fucking hated Man of Steel. It was mm-hmm. a terrible movie to me. I didn't like it. I didn't think it was true to character at all. Yeah. Um. Except I had no problem with him killing Zod because he's killed Zod in the comics like twice now. So yeah, that's, that's not true. a problem at all. Mm-hmm. But like. I just I couldn't get connected to the character at all. He was I was they were too busy shoving like Christ mythology down my throat. Like every scene, I'm being reminded of how he's the last survivor, the only son. He's always flying in a crucifix fashion. Yeah. Like I, I don't need you to tell me over and over. I get it. I understand that he's a failed Christ symbol. Mm-hmm. You don't need to tell me every time he's on screen, right? Yeah. So those things kind of annoyed me more about the movie. The movie is annoying, so I didn't I didn't connect to the character. Mm-hmm. Now when he's fighting Batman. I already thought Affleck was going to be a good Batman. Mm-hmm. And oh, when yeah. he was a good Batman, yeah. I didn't give a shit about Superman. So yeah. the, the confrontation to me is one-sided. Yeah. I thought Lois Lane was ridiculous as she was in the first movie. Mm-hmm. Useless, yeah. She's anti-gravity. I mean, she can fly. She mm-hmm. can she can fall when cars are flying in the air because the dubstep machine is like, you know, taking uh, is terraforming Earth. Oh, but yeah. somehow right. Lois can still fall. Like, come on, man. Like so many problems that movie. Mm-hmm. And then the second movie, I just look at it with disdain, right? Mm-hmm. Like the whole thing was silly. So then, like, I'm only rooting for one guy. There's no relationship. I just want to see Batman as Predator yeah. for the most part, right? Yeah. I think that's that's why Civil War works and that movie doesn't work. Because, mm-hmm. like, you've got two guys you care about. Yeah. You know, Cap and Iron Man. So I think if they stick to that formula, just build build me good characters build and make me though. care about them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, uh, that's, the one, that's the one thing I don't like about the, the, Mar- the Marvel Universe is that mm-hmm. there is um, there is a lack of good villains. Yeah. That's that's absolutely yeah. That's I think that's what they really have to address. Yeah, you're right. They've got one like one, Loki. Yeah, Loki. Yeah, he's it. 
Like who else? Who else do they have? Like honestly, they've got what Red Skull. He's dead. Yep. They've got um, Yellow Jacket is dead. Mm-hmm. They've got uh, what's his name from um, the first Iron Man. He's dead. Yeah. The dude. The dude is dead. The dude yeah. is dead. Yeah. yeah. Um, what happened to uh, the whips there? Oh, um, Iron Man two. Whiplash. Whiplash. Yeah. What happened to him? Is he dead? I don't remember. I mean, he he could be he could be a quadriplegic yeah. in that whole cr- clash of the the Iron Man suits isn't at like the a, end of two. Isn't like Hydra like the main villain of these movies? Most of these movies. Hydra is yeah, they're like that that background force, that driving force, right? Mm-hmm. Which is either dead or alive, depending on whether you're watching TV series <laughs> much, or yeah. the yeah, the true. movies, right? Yeah. yeah, we don't know what's going on right now. Yeah, but they don't have any, any like major singular villains that come. They don't back. really have yeah. a great. Yeah, you're they absolutely right. They yeah. don't have like a great, huge villain. No. Yeah, the um yeah that that's what I. I mean, we're we're getting it with Thanos. Not to you know, not to go away on here. Oh yeah, here. he's like one of my favorite villains. Yeah, he's he's an excellent villain. Yeah, Infinity Gauntlet, War, uh, Quest. Um, Thanos is so great because he knows he's a bad guy, and that's always his undoing. Mm-hmm. Like in the comic books, he's always the guy who's like, "I'm I'm gonna crush everybody. I'm the man. I'm the king. I'm the god. Oh my god, I killed everybody. What am I gonna do? I gotta bring him back. I'm an awful, awful human being creature." Yeah, and he brings them back. Like his his undoing is always himself. His himself. own like his conscience gets to him. Yeah, with the cosmic cube, the uh, every time the heart of the universe. Yep. And then with the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, the Gauntlet. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because the thing is, he knows he's not he's not worthy of all that power. Yeah. He knows it. Even when he got the heart of the universe. Exactly. He knew that he's like I'm not worthy. Of it. He took it too far. Yeah. And he he just felt right away. Yeah. And then he's the one who goes and helps the good guys win. Yeah. This is how you beat me. Yeah. <laughs> this is how you're gonna just this is how you're gonna destroy yeah. me. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Adam, Adam Warlock has his number. Every single fucking time. Every time, man. Because yeah. Warlock knows. He's just, just waited out. Yeah. yeah. It's like Foreman and Ali, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, you oh, just, yeah. like, go against the ropes and yeah. let him punch you loose. Now, he'll get tired. And then you go for the kill. Yep, yeah. go, go for, for the, the kill. kill. That's, what, that's what I loved about the Infinity Gauntlet when uh, when Adam Warlock told Galactus to fuck off. And mm-hmm. he's like, I goes, uh, he goes, I don't need, and Galactus almost like, tries to kill him and stuff. Yeah. And he's like, he goes, your, he goes, your power is nothing compared to, uh, to, to, to that Thanos. Like, the you, Gauntlet. You have to think. Yeah. And then uh, everything was a pawn. He played the game completely. Yeah. And so that's what that's why I, I love Adam Warlock. Yeah, Warlock's a good character. Yeah. Him. Him. him yeah. Yeah. Him. What a great character. Yeah. Him. Yeah. Wasn't he named Adam because of like some children on Earth or something? Was that what it was? I think it was. Yeah. They just called him Adam. That's what could he got the be. Name yeah. From. Yeah. Big and blonde naked guy shows up. Yeah. 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 Perfect human being. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He looks like Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. yeah. It has <laughs> been a, he does. He does. Or, yeah. The pre-Dolph. Put-off the pre-Dolph. Call. <laughs> exactly. It's been a long time since I read those, Me but too. man, they were yeah. like they still sit in my head as being those stories that I want to go back to someday. Yeah. I mean, oh, like yeah. they're they're a great run. Yeah. yeah. Like all the Jim Starlin stuff. We always talk about the Jim Starlin cosmic stuff. Yeah. Like all of those comics. Even the Jim Starlin '80s stuff with DC was amazing. Yeah. I mean, he was just that guy. Like everything yeah. he touched was just go- just awesome. Yeah. yeah. Man, he could not screw it up. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a. Um, yeah, I, that's for me. That's why I think that's why I like Guardians so much more yeah. than like the other ones, the other Marvel movies because. It just dealt with everything on a cosmic scale. Like you had the Celestials. Mm-hmm. Um, um, they were talking about cosmic events. Well, which, now, yeah, ego. E- yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Kurt, Kurt Russell, Russell is an ego. <laughs> like, how are they going to pull that off? Have you seen the costume? Oh, It I'm, looks like a hobbit suit. Yeah. I mean, he looks like Frodo should be wearing that shit. Wow. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you took his costume and you just said, hey, Lord of the Rings, this is the new hobbit suit, you'd be like, oh, I see that. Yeah, I understand. A white, you know, kind of like a, a tunic <laughs> and a, a shoulder pad, a bag of seeds. Now, does that mean that Quasar is gonna they're gonna, is gonna be in the movie? I don't know. Like how I don't know if he can fit in. Yeah, because Quasar is, is the I don't think he so. might be too much. Because Quasar I, and Eagle go together like bolts and guns. I'm assuming, right? In the yeah, comics, they do anyway, right? I, but I they didn't even later the later on. Like he ends up on e- Ego, right? Yeah, like Quasar is yeah. on Ego yeah, during yeah, the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, I don't think they'll put him in this movie. If they did, they would have. I think would have. We would have heard about that, but yeah, I, I just yeah, not, but yeah, that, that's why, because I, I, I in the Infinity Gauntlet movies, uh, mm-hmm. in books, sorry, they they mention yeah, the, yeah. Um, Quasar, and I remember Quasar tries to um, use the quantum bands yeah. against Thanos, and Thanos just bl- blows his hands off. Well, like even that, like in the um, in the newer stuff, like mm-hmm. the stuff that the movie's based on, the uh, Dan Dan Abnett and Andy, is it am I saying it right? Is it Dan Lanning and no, yeah, Andy Lanning and Dan Andy Abnett? Lanning, yeah. Yeah, their their version is what the movie's based on. Yeah. And that Quasar is a huge part of that. Mm-hmm. And in that one, it's like Star-Lord does not start as Star-Lord that we know him in the movies. Like, mm-hmm. he's just a dude on the prison planet, not giving a shit about anything. He still has a mechanical eye and all that. Mm-hmm. And I think it was um, Nova. Nova brings him back. Mm. Good old Richard Ryder. Ah. Uh, yeah. Richard nice. Ryder. <laughs> yeah. And he, Nova was great in that series. Yeah, I never read that series. I did, I did it, Annihilation? Yeah. Annihilation is incredible. Annihilation's now. wicked, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a, like, it was, what, like a two-year story? I think around there, yeah. yeah I read the I read the, uh, the 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 co- the collected issues. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's fantastic. It's a page
Yeah. And then um and then Ultron becomes the second villain in that. Yeah, that's right. So it's like two series. It's like it's the, it really is it's the birth of the Guardians of the Galaxy. So it goes from I guess before we watch the movie to where like um Peter Quill is like a nobody. Then Annihilation starts. They build a team, uh, Mantis, Gamora, Groot, Rocket, they're all on that team. And then from that it goes into the uh the destruction of Annihilus and then from that Ultron shows up. That's when they really really form into what you know in the movie. Mm, wow. Yeah, that's wow. why Mantis is in the in the movie now. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, the um, yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, Mantis is there, and then what's that? Speaking of the, the books to movies, mm-hmm. how, how are they going to do Old Man Logan then? Did you see the the, the totally different? See, it looks see, like. the, see the image they they posted today? No. Um, I have it here on my phone, but you can look it up, and it says like uh, he looks like he's. Roger, you see. can pull it up. Yeah, it's it, he looks, he looks fucking old. Yeah, he looks haggard. Yeah, haggard. But, yeah. Uh, but if they're going for the Old Man Logan story, which is is that confirmed or? Well, it's the Reavers, right? It's not. It's not going to be the Hulk family. No, it can't be the Hulk family. Yeah, it's not going to be, yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So, so um, it's going to be the Reavers instead of the Hulks, which I'm hoping they kind of have the same kind of hillbilly feel to them. I hope so, yeah. yeah. But like, um, Professor X is in it, and he looks old as shit too, right? Yeah. The, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, he looks... Um, fuck. Jesus Christ, have a milkshake. Jesus Christ. Some that bread, guy, man. Yeah. That boy that needs guy, some bread. That guy, that guy needs, <laughs> he needs some vitamins. He needs a vitamin B12 shot. But I mean, I'm sure a lot of his makeup. Like yeah. he takes he takes that uh, that little jacket off and he's jacked. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. So they, they, they're gonna have to replace the Hulk and they have to replace Hawkeye too, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah, obviously. because they're all Marvel. Yeah, yeah. and Spider Man. Yeah, Spider Man's all well, Spider Girl. Spider Girl. Spider Man was like dead, right? Yeah. But then the Spider Man car can't be there. Spider-Man. Yeah, they can't be using the car because yeah. isn't that the car they use? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. a road trip vehicle, yeah. right? That car, yeah. that car's half the movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like the, so that's half yeah, the comic that, book. That, that, that car is yeah. attached to that movie. That the Dune line. buggy. Yeah. That's right. And then they have, who else do they have? They have um, the Kingpins in there. Uh, who else is in that? Um, it, it's a Marvel comic. Yeah. Like it's not much. It's not yeah. an X-Men comic. No, it's a Marvel It's comic. a Marvel Universe comic. Yeah. 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 So there's going to be a lot going on they got to change. Yeah. yeah. There's oh, like the, corp- oh, the corpse of mm-hmm. Loki is in that thing. Uh, well, like on that on the uh, well, Picard, It's a crater to Vegas, right? Yeah. yeah well, where all the bodies are in it? Well, Picard yeah. is placing Hawkeye. Basically. I think he's going to be like the yeah, road that's trip true, character. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think yeah. um, there's... I like how we're, we're calling him Picard. Picard. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Picard isn't there, right? Yeah, yeah. that bald he'll, he'll, That's who he'll be. Like, he'll, he'll yeah. never be Professor X. No. no it's he's too hard to say Professor yeah. X. I believe that's you, buddy. One of you guys is starting to shake my table up. Just the way Shadow will never be TJ Hooker, right? Shatner will never be TJ Hooker. No. no. Shatner will always be Kirk. Yeah. 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 He, he is Kirk. Yeah. He is Although TJ Hooker was a great show. Fantastic. TJ Hooker was fantastic. Yeah. He and took I, the and I'll have baton. Anyone who says otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> and Shatner did win three Emmys for uh, what's it called, Boston League or whatever that show was called. A, a excellent show. Yeah, and he won fucking Emmys. Yeah, he won Emmys for that show. Yeah, yeah you know he won, he won or not won he uh, married James Spader in that, in the end. I don't because his character was getting Alzheimer's or like some severe dementia. Oh, really? oh that's right. Yeah, yeah instead that's of losing right. yeah. all of his stuff, he's like, you know what? I need to I need to gay marry you. And he married James Spader in like a civil union. So James Spader had like, um, what do oh, they wow. call that? The uh, power of attorney. Power of attorney. Yeah. Over That's all right. of his stuff. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I never watched the series. I just knew that he won the Emmys. Excellent series, man. Yeah, wait, wait. Excellent watched series, it because yeah. he won the Emmys. Really good? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a well-made show. Now, was that was that a David E. Kelly show? I think it was. David E. Um, Kelly, who I will work this into every podcast. <laughs> David E. Kelly did a remake of Star Wars I, I like with Lake Kelly, Placid. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Lake <laughs> Placid, <laughs> Dan. Dan, for you. <laughs> Lake Placid is a remake of Star Wars. Until I get some credible information from David E. Kelly yeah. calling me up, telling me to shut my mouth in case he gets sued. <laughs> oh, and um, Star Trek. Oh, was it called Boston Public, the show? Right? Boston, yeah, Boston, Boston Public, Public was the first one. That was, it was about yeah, a school. He, he did yeah. Boston League as well. Yeah. He was kind of like the, um, the, what's it called? The Dick Wolf. Dick Wolf. Yeah. <laughs> of, those, of those shows. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's actually a good way to put it. Yeah. The Boston. The Boston shows. Boston. Yeah. There's, um, uh, did you... Uh, you guys know now that uh, Star Trek's on uh, Netflix now, right? The original series. Oh, is it? Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. the remastered one, and um, How does I was it watching. Oh, it's 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 the greatest thing I've ever seen. Oh, the show is fantastic. Yeah, and it, it is a great show. And it that one, that one scene with Kirk when there was the, they had the doppelganger. Oh. And he's like, those, those, that, that's a really good. And episode. he's like, stay there. And they, I think the, the funniest thing was that how to draw. They had to make the difference between the the two of them. They put eyeliner on the fake Kirk. Yeah. And they turn. And he's like, yeah, the intruders on board. And whatever, right? And then uh, the other, the evil Kirk, if you want to call him that, turns around. He's like, he turns around. He's like, I'm Captain Kirk. I'm, and then he's like, then the famous line. The, what? How do you say it? I can't remember. He's like, he's like, I'm Captain Kirk. And he looks at the camera, and 
I actually fell on the floor laughing. It was like the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever seen in my life. It's, it looks so ridiculous. He has like, a meltdown. Yeah, he had, he had a complete, yeah. utter mental melt- meltdown. And I'm like, that's the Kirk I know. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the Canadian Kirk I love. He's he's excellent he's in that fantastic. show. I mean, yeah. He's, 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 yeah. He's such masculinity that we talked about. We talked about this on the phone yesterday, how he is manly. manly. Yeah. Like that's, is. that's a manly guy without and without being jokey. I don't like people out there who will be like, oh, well, no, it's a jokey. Like, it's a big joke. It's hilarious. Whatever. Ha ha. Right? Yeah. Just watch the series, man. He's great. And that's a dude who gets shit done. Damn oh, yeah. right, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, He's a guy in the captain's chair, and you're like, that's the guy you want in the captain's chair. Yeah. 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 You yeah. want him on that wall. Yeah. yeah. You need him on that wall. You need him, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and Vic, like we were saying, Spock can be replaced by different actors. The good actors can replace yes. Spock, but nobody. Yeah, it's hard, man. Like, nobody, Chris Pine is yeah. a good captain, but he's not Captain Kirk. No. No. Yeah. He's not. Yeah. There's, um, yeah, that show doesn't work without, um, with Shatner. Without Shatner. Yeah, Shatner. It doesn't. I, I can't think, like, obviously the, the actors back in the day, like, those, those are few and far between you could do who yeah. wanted to do science fiction, but. But but think it's, think, it, think, think, think this way though, which, like, Zachary Quinto, mm-hmm. that amazing Spock. Yeah. When you look at him, you're thinking, well, that's, that's Spock. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. But yeah. nobody can do what Shatner did. No, like, when, kind of, when, you, when you, I was you, watching. Do you think that's because we're spoiled by Shatner? No, no, no. I just don't think it's impossible. Vic said it perfectly. He goes, it's almost impossible. For an actor to, to have that role the way Shatner did. The way Shatner did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Shatner, Shatner became we, the quintessential Kirk. Yeah, because we can't see it. We can't imagine it any other way. Yeah. No. And yeah. A, 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 another actor can't pull it off. And no. But, yeah. It's, but but Zachary couldn't have Spock. You can see them. Like you can, see, you can see the same person. Yeah. You can you can really see that yeah. he is Spock. He is Spock. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So like there's um. So what's that? You know that internal question. If you're surrounded by two Klingon ships, who do you want? Who do you want? Who do you want in the captain's chair? Oh yeah, who do you want in the captain's chair? Yeah, you want Kirk in that well, chair. That's, that's a no-brainer. That's a no-brainer. Yeah, that's a no-brainer. Man. No-brainer at all. Yeah. Picard yeah. number two, and then Cisco for me number three. Yeah, you were saying Cisco, uh, right? I would yeah. say Cisco number two. <laughs> <laughs> Cisco over Picard. Because <laughs> Picard would be doing Earl Grey and like talking about number one, engage, report. Picard Tom. was the thinking man's, <laughs> the yep. thinking man's captain. Yeah. yeah, he was. Yeah. Like Picard was almost in a sense always trying to be multiple steps ahead. Maybe not always doing it, but he was willing to think it out. Yeah. Multiple steps ahead. And when the battle actually happened, well, he already knew what was going to happen in his mind. Mm-hmm. So it would go the way he thought it would. Mm-hmm. Plus, like, the Borg wanted him. Yeah. The Borg didn't want him because he's just some dude. The Borg wanted, the Borg wanted a, like, a daddy. Yeah. Like, you know, they wanted They wanted king. his mind, yeah. They yeah. Want, yeah, they wanted his mind, right? Yeah. No, he was a very cool, cool captain in his own right. Fuck yeah. Klingons, man. Hand to hand. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. That, that, that's true, actually. Yeah. What, yeah, what was that? Um, yeah, the, the yeah, because I remember the um, the hand chop by Captain Kirk, the karate chop, the karate the neck chop, chop yeah. Um, and then when he fi- was finding the Gorn mm-hmm. on that planet, when he made the gun, oh, he built the uh, he built the shotgun. I don't remember this episode. The Gorn, remember the big green lizard, the Gorn. Okay, okay. When okay. it's just him oh, on the planet okay, with yeah, the Gorn. Kind of, kind of, so, remember, yeah. the, uh, remember the tinfoil eyes kind of thing? Like yeah. Eyes, yeah, I remember they were they, he, he was giving him like a microphones. Bear hug. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, he was like uh, he was giving him a bear hug, and then he chopped him in the ears. And that totally discombobulated him completely. <laughs> it was well, the worst fight in the world. That's, I, 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 it's not hard for me to believe. That's totally Kirk could do that. Well, I mean, yeah. who who did research on Gorn eardrums? True enough. Who <laughs> dropped the ball on that scene is what yeah. I want to know. Yeah. No, but that's, that's a cool <laughs> scene, man. Yeah, yeah. That's a really cool scene. I honestly thought when they were doing um, Star Trek Beyond, yeah. there was gonna be that was going to be the Gorn. Yeah. Like on that planet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Yeah, I- Idris Elba, is he the actor yeah. who's playing that guy? Yeah. He looks like a Gorn. Yeah, he's got that Gorn kind of like body type. Yeah. yeah. Like he's a big dude. He's kind of yeah. lumbering. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, at the same time, he's like, he moves like very primal, right? He's got yeah. that way to move around to like make it look like he could really yeah. mess you up. I'm surprised he has, like, it was him. He has such a small little role, really. Um, yeah, it was very weird. It was yeah. it was like, uh, like I mentioned, it, it felt like a very good episode of yeah. Star Trek. Yeah. yeah. Like if you're watching a TV series, this is like one of the best episodes of that TV series. Oh, yeah. It didn't feel like a movie. No. Mm-hmm. It's it perfectly fine as an entry. But I mean, by no means, I feel like I was watching a cinematic Star Trek movie. No, no not at all. Yeah. That's a rule of threes at Trek, though, right? Like a third one always sucks. The odd number of Star Trek movies always suck. So Star Trek Three, so just Spock, you didn't like that? No, but that's the rule of that's Star Trek. Rule like, of Star like Trek, that's yeah. like a like a common pop culture thing. Yeah, like Star Trek. Every third one Rathacon sucks. was good. Um, yeah, the Voyage well, Home was Voyage good, was and then uh, Undiscovered yeah. Country. But oh, like, yeah. yeah, like Star Trek Number One was um, 2001: Space Odyssey. Yeah, it was very weird. Yeah, like it was it was like a well boring as hell. A villain I mean, you can't punch, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But things uh, I liked it because I just it, it kind of that's why I think I liked it because it reminded me of two thousand one. Yeah, it had those trippy moments. But yeah, like you're when right. Spock yeah. is going into the void. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's some really weird stuff. Yeah, but, I mean, for all we know, it's not something I ever
uh, 2001. So like everyone was trying to make the next 2001. But yeah. but no, but it came after Star Wars. So you think it'd be, they're trying to copy Star Wars? You would you would imagine. You yeah. would imagine. But the thing but is, Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. They they covered the field there. Yeah. 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 yeah and uh, yeah, and then there was uh, and then two, uh, Wrath of Khan, mm-hmm. which I should have picked up the director's Fantastic cut today. Fantastic movie. And. Uh, yeah, there's this, and then three was Search for Spock, mm-hmm. and which isn't bad, which but isn't, it's, it's yeah. weaker than, than it's definitely, weaker, yeah. But the Voyage Home made up for it. Really did. Voyage <laughs> Home is terrific. Yeah, Voyage Home is uh, fantastic. Out of the fucking blue movie, man. Yeah, and, uh, the Art- Voyage Home is that it, it felt it felt like it was the era that movie is made in. Yeah, like you were watching a time capsule movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah, and that movie got you involved. Like, okay, what if these guys lived in our time? Yeah, yeah. that was the main thing. When, when uh, Leonard Nimoy wrote that movie, he's mm-hmm. probably like. Just imagine that. And then they're like, this would be a great idea. And yeah. then ideas were probably bouncing off the walls. They're like, you know what? Look, oh, yeah. We can make this into a movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I just think I had with the scenes in the movie. <laughs> they're yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Spock's ears. Yeah. Covers yeah. them up with a headband. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, great moments, man. Yeah. I was, thinking, mm-hmm. I, I was thinking about that today, too, when there, when there was uh, that, that scene where um, they're talking to that, that whale bitch, whatever her name is. And she's like, he goes, and then Captain Kirk just looks at her and she's like, you're not catching, catching us at our best. And then Spock goes, <laughs> that's for certain. <laughs> <laughs> Great moments, man. Like, really good dialogue. Yeah. Even, I, even Spock on the bus giving the, the obnoxious kid. The, yeah. Oh, the, <laughs> yeah, the, the Vulcan neck pinch? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The nerve pinch? Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to find that song he's playing He's playing in the Ghetto Blaster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That was that was a very, like, late 80s. Definitely, like, a time capsule entry. Yeah. yeah. There are yeah. a few movies that can really nail that. Yeah. Where you feel like, man, I wish I was a kid again. Yeah. In that neighborhood. Yeah. Like the burbs. Yeah. Oh, the my burbs. God. Like you feel like don't, a, don't mention the burbs to this guy. Oh my oh, yeah. god. It's I I think like we you know how I mentioned we met in seventh grade. Yeah. When the burbs came out. Yeah. I think that was like around the time we met. Eighty nine ish ninety. Yeah. Eighty nine ninety, and it was one of those things where we bonded on. Yeah. Like that, our love that movie. Yeah. I think we we said that Ray. Yeah. This is Walter. Yeah. <laughs> like that that was said maybe a thousand times a day yeah. for us. Not to mention, I want to kill. Everyone, Everyone. Satan, Satan is, is my, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Satan is my pal. Yeah. Ray, Ray, you're chanting, Ray. Yeah, yeah. You know this. You know what this goes. I want to kill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. what a yeah. Great underrated comedy. Extremely underrated. Yeah, yeah that's you know a great it movie. is my number one comedy of all time. Which uh, burbs? the burbs? Oh yeah. Oh, fantastic. Hands down. Yeah, it's in my top three. 100%. There you go, the burbs. Oh, <laughs> the burbs. Oh shit. yeah. No, that's that's great. I I only put it above Ghostbusters because that could have happened in your neighborhood. Hundred the Clopacks. Open. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like yeah. we could have been Corey Feldman watching yeah. all that go down Absolutely. in our neighborhood. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Could have. Yeah. That's why I put it cuz it's like it's I love movies where they take such a weird scenario yeah. and make you go get binoculars. Yeah. I think there's like the Goonies. Yeah. The, the Goonies, Goonies yeah. could have happened to us uh, as yeah. kids, right? Yeah. Absolutely. They were our age. Yeah. We were there. It's like you think to yourself like I'm going to go find my friends in some small town and find a goddamn pirate ship. Yeah. Yeah, yeah things could have happened to you. Yeah. It's um that that was that's that's a childhood adventure movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And exactly. That, that's why that movie works so much because it, it can because re- everyone can relate to it. Yeah, yeah. That's what I love about that movie. They don't make adventure movies anymore. They don't. Uh, yeah, like close. I mean, action movies, yeah, and all that kind of stuff. But really good adventure movies, like good beginning to end. I think maybe like what the last one's a rundown. Where it was like <laughs> an actual wasn't adventure movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's two idiots trying to go from point A to point B yeah. while multiple things are trying to stop them from making their journey. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the only uh, the best. I think that's, for that's, me, that's probably my favorite rock movie. Oh yeah, right easily. Down. Oh god, easily. yeah, yeah. 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 I'm trying to think of what good rock movies there are. Wow. Uh, like his earlier ones were better than his late later ones. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of become that guy who is just taking all the action movie roles for like how many more big action movie stars we have we don't yeah. have a whole lot right yeah he's the he's the new PG-13 I was about to say that yeah, I was about to say that. yeah that's, that's exactly it yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's the main thing yeah, I know and the thing is too is like he, obviously he's getting into a fight with Vin Diesel over the set on Fast and Furious fucking 15 or whatever the hell it is now yeah yeah and it's just awful. I'm just like standing there, like, why the fuck do they keep making these movies? Well, I know why, because they make billions the, of dollars. They make a lot of money because yeah. people, because idiots will go and see these movies. Yeah, because I will say, Ballers is phenomenal. It is. Ballers is an amazing show. Ball, have you seen it? Yeah. No, you know what? <coughs> I'm, I'm the only person I know who doesn't watch like, like, like TV. TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't watch TV either. I yeah, know, no, you just it's you can get it online. Do I you mean, um, yeah? Do you guys watch Game of Thrones? Um, no. I just, I just yeah, I don't either. I've never seen one episode of Game of Thrones. I'm kind of not watching it out of spite. Yeah, me really? too. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm only not yeah. watching it out of spite. Like yeah. Harry Potter, I, I would imagine Harry Potter is phenomenal. I oh, bet yeah, you the books too. are incredibly I, well written. I, yeah. I've never we, seen a Harry Potter movie. Neither no. have I. But I had like a, a 40-year-old tell me I should read them because they're amazing. And I was like, nope. No. Because like he had this weird culty look when he said amazing. Like, he dragged it out. And I was like, nope. Out of spite. Out of spite for that, that guy. Yeah, those are the guys who've been alone for too long. Yeah. 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 yeah.
Yeah, and like I, I yeah. kind of feel wow. bad. Like I feel like I'm doing that thing a disservice because I mean a lot of really good filmmakers involved yeah. in incredible effects, critical practical and too. yeah, practical critical success. Yep. Well written, yeah. and the books are, are highly praised. Yeah. I'm sure she writes some incredible books. Yeah. But I won't watch them out of spite for the people who really ruined it for me. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's yeah. what I'm doing for Game of Thrones. Yeah. And it's not uh, the band, it's the fans. Yeah. And the thing is, um, I know I can respect it. I can mm-hmm. respect the show. I know how well it's made. Yep. It's bri- it's brilliantly written. Yep. I think I would rather read the books than um, watch the show. Mm-hmm. But uh, um, everyone keeps telling me, I think it's been spoiled for me because I have people show me scenes like, oh, you have to watch The Red Wedding or you have to watch this dragon scene or whatever the hell it yeah. is, right? I feel like, I, like you have to watch the Battle of. Milfgard or whatever the hell it is yeah like <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know the Battle like, of Milfgard yeah so I'm just like this is <laughs> I am writing that book yeah so yeah <laughs> the, Battle of Mil- <laughs> the Battle of Milfgard I don't know so like I'm sitting there and I'm like why do I Um, I kind of feel like I've gotten the like I was I watched yeah actually my friend uh, Sandy showed me my friend Sandy showed me to, like uh, to uh, you know Sandy Gackle remember Sandy oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So shout he's, out to he's, Sandy Gackle yeah he's like let me give you this. I'm not sure how good this show is so he showed me the scene where like they're in a they're in a gladiatorial ring and this girl, she's like, yeah, she's head of the dragons and they're about to be killed. I'm like, hey, when does the dragon show up? Dragon fucking shows up 10 seconds later. I'm yeah. like, there you go. Okay, uh, the show is, I'm like, okay, I've, I think I know what the gist of the show is now. You, you actually can't decide why you want to watch it less. Yeah. Like there's so much being thrown at you that mm-hmm. you've decided like there's multiple reasons. Yeah, there's a t- yeah, there's more. Yeah, there's more reasons dragons. for me not to watch it than reasons for me to watch it. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I'm like, you know what? It's, it's a losing battle. Spike yeah. Game of Thrones, but don't say Walking Dead though. Say again? You can spite Game of Thrones, but you'll never spite Walking Dead. No, I gave up on the show a long time ago. Oh, you did? Yeah, I mean, it's I don't I I can only watch so much engineered like yeah. tear jerker moments. Yeah, and that show is built on making you want to feel for these characters. Like right. they, they they build them up to this weird mythological level, and then you're supposed to get like all teary eyed and they die. Yeah, I don't want to fucking watch a show where they're trying to get me to cry every two seconds. Yeah, I want to watch it's I want to like, watch TV to get entertained. <laughs> yeah, I want to be entertained. I don't want to be depressed. No, none of these shows have ma- major. Uh, rewatchability do they no man they don't really have a lot of rewatchability and they don't really i i personally don't think i can watch a story about that many stupid characters over and over again like we talked about earlier how you have to have dumb characters otherwise you don't have a story yeah but like there's like the walking dead to me is like the pinnacle of poor character development and just just like dumb characters like how can you have that many stupid guys in one room yeah. and they make these great moments where like one character is like no we're gonna do it we're gonna fight them all and they get their mm. guns and shovels and they had never run out of bullets Nobody's worried about making bullets in the comics. They're freaking out about bullets all the time. Yeah. You know? Huh. And it's just like one of those things where I can't watch that many dumb guys have hero moments over and over again. Did mm-hmm. you watch Breaking Bad over again? I've actually, you know, like only watched the first six episodes of that show. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. I never really like, got into it. Not yeah. out of like uh, the spite thing or yeah, whatnot. Yeah, I just, same, I just never here. did. Same yeah. here, man. Yeah. Same here. Oh, yeah. I watched all of uh, Breaking Bad. And yeah. Yeah. I, I, the thing is, I just love, I just love the show because it's just, it but just seems like. you watch it again and again and again? Um, Probably not, right? No, it's like watching. Um, uh, what's the? Yeah, because the thing is, like, you have to. That's the show where, like, I think you have to watch it over and over again. Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna, if you're gonna revisit it, it's not a show you can just watch an episode. Of, like, oh, that episode was great. I, I think yeah. That, I think that's what the problem is. Yeah. That's why comedies you can watch over and over again. Yeah. Like you can watch these comedy anytime yeah. you want. Oh yeah. Like, yeah, and WKRP, the thing is, like, WKRP, any you know, episode. Yeah. WKRP yeah. in Cincinnati. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can watch any episode, but. <laughs> Only with the original music. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, yeah. Yeah. I can't watch it with like that, that no, no, filler no. shit they put yeah. in there. Shout got almost 85%. Yeah. Shout got it almost. Complete. Actually, yeah. yeah. One thing I can't watch is uh, Three's Company when they change the sofa. Oh, and that's one of my that, that, that's one of my vices. That was a pet peeve. Yeah, I just can't. Yeah. Watch. Yeah, for me, it's like when I see the, the sofa change. Mm-hmm. As with anything, even with uh, the Cosby Show. Yeah. When they got that blue sofa, mm-hmm. I'm like, fuck this. This is bullshit. I've got a, a solution for the Cosby Show. You take out all the scenes of Bill Cosby. Mm-hmm. Like CGI, whatever you got to do. We've got the technology now, right? You rename that show The Jackson Family, but Samuel L. Jackson in all the scenes oh, of Bill fuck. Cosby. Yeah, that'd be crazy. <laughs> Delivering like just remotely the same line, yeah. but and with you, so much aggression. And you can only get it on Amazon Prime because only be Amazon so much, Prime. Yeah, because every second word is motherfucker. <laughs> it gets, yeah, and it gets the staff, the old cast paid again. Yeah. It's like all that royalty money's gone for them. Yeah. Everybody yeah. ditched it, right? Yeah. yeah. Bill Cosby won't get paid because his name is gone. Yeah. And you just, like, you just tweak it enough. Enough to get that that whole cast back on TV because you all want to see them back. But wouldn't it be great to see him in a Cosby sweater? Yeah. yeah. And fun fact, he was a stand-in for Bill Cosby when yeah. they were making that show. That's right. Yeah. So it's already lit oh, wow. for Samuel L. Jackson. Oh man, Samuel. Yeah. Samuel, Samuel Jackson will not say no to anything. No, he'll say he'll do anything. Yeah. His IMD page is like if you try to launch it, it'll it'll crash your computer because yeah. he has he's he's in like a thousand movies. Well, yeah. He's also in. Uh, Skull Island or Conga, whatever it's called. Skull yeah, Island. that's yeah. right. And Tarzan playing like roughly the same character. Yeah, roughly the same yeah. character. Tarzan, which is like weirdly enough, like, when we watched it, we both realized that it was like a prequel to Blood Diamond. 
Really? Yeah, when you watch Tarzan, oh, it's no actually way. like a prequel to Blood Diamond. Fucking really? Blood Diamond. Yeah. Same thing, white guy, Jamin Huntu, lots of diamonds. Fuck, yeah, Blood South Diamond. South Africans. <laughs> Same Fucking, shit. Yeah. I watched that movie just because, just because uh, it was an Edward Zwick movie. Blood Diamond? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Zwick makes some really uh, good movies. Blood Diamond is a great movie. Yeah, it's yeah. a great movie, yeah. yeah. And um, I, his next movie looks pretty good, too. Which one is that? Jack Reacher 2. Oh, is, is that Zwick, huh? Really? Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. He didn't do the first one. No. Huh. Yeah. Is Jack oh, Reacher wow. PG-13? I don't remember. No, no. The, no, the first one was definitely an R. Yeah, it was an R. The second yeah. one looks even. I mean, the second, he like the second crushed one, a guy's skull in that yeah. movie. Man. Like, was there blood in that movie? Oh yeah, yeah. Second I'm one looks. I can't remember because I've seen. I did see it. It's it's pretty violent. It might be PG thirteen, but it could be like an eighties PG thirteen. Yeah, because I'm. Yeah, because yeah. uh, okay. Jack Reacher two looks crazy. Yeah, go ahead. Man. Yeah, I, I actually. Yeah. Uh, it looks like it's it's kind of like a running version of Jack Reacher one. Yeah, like they're just much. like always moving, always getting away from whoever's after him. Well, J- well, Tom Cruise has to run. Yeah, yeah. He has to because he's been like framed for a crime or something. This one. Right? Oh yeah, he's he runs and he runs. Oh, you mean like physically? Yeah, yeah. Run, Tom Cruise has that in the contract. Yeah, he, yeah. He has yeah. to run full tilt. And if it's not in the contract, he has to. He'll put it in the contract. Yeah, yeah. Even the movie doesn't call for it. Okay, this movie shot in one in one stage. He's like, well, can I run off it? Can I, can I just run the straight that cool line? Or um, well, I'm doing it anyway. So <laughs> Luke, uh, Luke, our other our South Side Strangler there, who we've mentioned a few times already, he made a great point. I don't know where he got it from or if he came up with it. That uh, that Tom Cruise runs. Like that, like what you read about in books. Yeah, like he runs like what you wish the ideal running speed of of that you had. Yeah, like a full tilt, yeah. doesn't get tired. That whole scene in Mission Impossible Three, I could watch it on a loop. Oh yeah, his his run at the end. Oh That's yeah, it's an excellent sequence. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah actually, uh, what? Okay, for listeners here who uh, haven't noticed, PG thirteen, huh? I knew it. It, it. it wasn't a bloody dark. It wasn't a bloody brutal movie. It was like off screen a lot of the scenes and uh that last fight was pretty brutal man uh, no, I, the one with him and uh kyle reese there uh jay courtney jay courtney <laughs> yeah kyle reese oh, for a second that you fuck. got me excited like i was kyle of, reese? Uh, michael Biehn, obviously no no no, but, no. Uh, um yeah no it's the new kyle reese the new yeah the new kyle reese Captain, the Captain, jacked buff Captain starving Boom. hungry Captain yeah. Boomerang. Yeah. Captain Boomerang. Like Captain it, Boomerang was terrific. Oh, we, we thought we said that. Yeah, yeah. Captain yeah. Boomerang. He, jay, jay courtney is like we were talking about this he's He's kind of like the, one of those guys who just like one of those like Hollywood cuts kind of forced on uh, on everybody. Yeah. Because they just needed a guy who could just pretty buff, you know, semi, you know, decent looking. Average. Mm-hmm. Like, average, basically. right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, but given good material, like Captain yeah. Boomerang, where he's not taken seriously. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, um, exactly. yeah he, he did a really, I think he did a good job. I yeah. think he's got uh, Hems- Hemsworth-itis, that he's much funnier than people give him credit for. I think so too. But they're yeah. not giving him comedy roles. Yeah. Because Captain Boomerang was, he was great, man. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like they cut out a lot more than they left in. For sure. That what oh, we saw. I, I wouldn't be surprised. That would have yeah. been just gold. Oh, yeah. So Hemsworth is a big fan? I, I like the guy, man. I think he should be doing more. He's uh he's like uh, Charming Potatoes there. Ch- uh, Charming Tatum. Who he's actually, another guy. Who Funny actually, dude. Yeah, he actually kind of made through to the comedy market. Yeah. Like, he's actually respected in the comedy market. Yeah. Wasn't he a stripper before? Yep. Yeah. That's he was, right? Magic Mike, is he wrote that... Uh, is that based on his life? Is, is, is that an exaggerated oh, version they, of his life story? Yeah, it's an exaggerated, exactly, exactly yeah. Uh, okay. It's an exaggerated version of not just him, but guys that he knew. No, oh, okay. So he took multiple stories around his little journey. Yeah. And he turned that into Magic Mike. You know what I hate is that when, um, especially at my office, like the girls who work at my office, they're all, they're talking about Magic Mike and they're like, oh, I can't wait to see this movie. Oh, Channing Tatum T- is in it. And I was like, fuck, I don't know whether it's like just jealousy because he's fucking successful, mm-hmm. but it's more like, like, fuck, I'm like, you're watching this movie for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, no, that, that's what it is. Yeah. They're not getting the, the heart of it. The heart of it. It's like we were talking about this with Conan the Barbarian. Oh, fuck. Conan, yeah, that, that, like, movie's, that movie's... People don't watch that for yeah. the actual reason you're watching. That is a that is probably number one sword and sandals movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, hands down. It's the best, yeah. And the story has got so much more heart than anybody ever gives it credit for. Oh, yeah. And and it's always being looked at as like, eh, it's Arnold, he's going to punch a camel. Let's go have some beers and watch Conan. And yeah, then, like, and he's you know, going to bang on this. some like, fucking chambermaids or whatever. Yeah, man. It's yeah. like everybody always riffs off it, but that's mm-hmm. a really good movie. Yeah. Well made, well shot, well directed, how written many, by Oliver Stone. Yeah. yeah. At, yeah. His, at his prime. Yeah. 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 And uh, how many people have, uh, how many movies have ripped off from it? Yeah, exactly. It, exactly. it built that genre in the 80s. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Like Gladiators took from it. I was about to say that. Yeah. 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 Gladiator took from it, yeah. Actually, um, when Gladiator came out, they used the, the score. Music. Yeah, Same. the music as like the, uh, well, I guess like the shooting score. Yeah. And then they had it and in the and trailer. the trailers as well. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. When they're coming out, they first come out in the main yeah. arena yeah. in the Coliseum. Yeah. They're all freaked out. Yeah, they use the the intro for Conan the Barbarian. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but Conan is still critically well received as well. It is, yeah. Well by the right people. Right. Yeah, by the I mean the general mass audience looks at it as just like a goofy. It's Arnold. Yeah. What's he gonna do? He's gonna have a funny accent. He's gonna have a dumb haircut. 
He's got a sword. Obviously, it's just going to be Arnold swinging a sword around, right? Right. They don't, like, I think, like, most people don't think of it like that. I've had, like, family members and whatnot ask me, hey, I'm going to watch a movie, movie today on Netflix or whatnot. What should I watch? I'll just be like, ah, I don't know. I just, just go watch Conan. It's on there right now. And jokingly say it, right? And they're like, oh, I, I had no idea it was that good. I'm like, no, it's freaking awesome, yeah, man. Yeah, they, they, they think it's just some, some brainless movie. But it's yeah. Like, yeah, it's not. His, not um, in the director's cut, his speech about, like, yeah, the, the yeah. spring wind. Yeah. Shit, man. That yeah. is like Oscar worthy material yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah, he did a great job. I he did a very good job. Yeah. yeah, I was surprised how good he did that. When right. he gives like his best friend an out, like you don't need to fight my fight and die for me. And Super Ty's like, Nah, man, I'm with you to the end. Yeah, it'll only bring me back here another day. But you wouldn't say that about Conan the Destroyer though. Destroyer is awful. Yeah, that's a dumpster fire. Yeah. But do you think why did they why did they make the sequel? Just Disney? because on the, on the success contract, of it. Contract. Yeah, it was a contract. Fuck. Milius always said that he thought it was gonna be like the James Bond of sword and sandals. That you would make a movie every few years and it was gonna be like a really good like Conan adventure. Yeah. But his idea was based on like the the Robert E. Howard translated by like Sal Buscema and who else? Who's the writer on all those? The yeah. old um. Robert E. Howard. No, no, no. But in the comics, like all those like uh, oh, oh, the actual um, comics. Shit. Was it Gene Cole? Oh, might have been. I've got it actually in the back over there, a uh, collected edition. But that era of Marvel yeah. Comics, Conan, yeah. like he was inspired by that to make those into like a James Bond yeah, style yeah, thing because yeah. they they translated the Howard stories so well, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was kind of an idea behind them. And then like they really they got ended up pushed they got ended up getting pushed into a Disney Disneyified version of it. You know, and that's what that's what they got because that was getting big at the time. Yeah, like, I watched Destroyer. Yeah, and I enjoy it now more because 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 Will, Will Chamberlain, I liked his role in there. Uh, what about Andre the Giant? Who was fantastic. But yeah. you, never, you never see his, you, face. You never see his face. Wait, what were we yeah. talking about here? Conan the Destroyer. Yeah. Oh, fuck, yeah. <laughs> like, I enjoyed it a lot more than I did back then. Uh, yeah, I, I, because we're disconnected now. Disconnected now, yeah. right? Oh, like, completely, yeah. <laughs> but in terms of, uh, Arnold's never looked physically better than any movie he's ever done. Than the yeah, that was right before, right? Or was it right after? What? Uh, was it one of the Olympias? Or was it right no, before no, Olympia? No, it was the first one. His last Olympia was 1980. So was it 1980? Barbarian came. Oh, Barbarian. Okay, right, yeah, yeah. The director of Destroyer said he wanted 10 more pounds from his uh, Barbarian uh, in friend. the In the beginning of Destroyer, he looks incredible. Yeah, like that's his physical peak in his movies. Yeah. More than Commando, Predator, uh, more than uh, Red Heat. I will, I will absolutely take your word for it. Because, like, you are such a huge Arnold guy. Right. I mean, probably, like, out of all the people I know, right. you're the biggest Arnold yeah, fan. Yeah, actually, all the people I know, yeah. and that includes, like, people in like on TV and movies, <laughs> and uh, probably his family. <laughs> yeah. I want to say, like, Raji is probably the in, biggest. In yeah. six degrees of, of Raji separation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the Raji, biggest Arnold fan. Yeah, Raji yeah. is, like, uh, like... Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, yeah. I would buy that. Yeah. So, I would, yeah, I would tend to uh, agree with you, or take your word for it, if you think that's the, yeah. the best he looked. Physically, by far. Yeah, he was jacked. Yeah. And he was round. Like, he was all yeah, he was the round. right kind of big. Yeah. And then credit goes to the director who asked him, I want you to put 10 extra pounds from your frame that you had in the Barbarian. Mm-hmm. So Arnold did it. What do you prefer, though? Barbarian or Destroyer for physique-wise for Conan? Because you got to remember, he moves like a panther. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I love musculature, Yeah, I prefer the Destroyer body. Yeah. Um, but it's not too far off from the Barbarian body. It's not. I mean, it's like less of a V-shape. Yeah, because exactly. he's just so much bulkier, right? Yeah. Well, the predator body is like the panther body. Yeah, yeah the predator Arnold. Yeah, predator Arnold. Yeah. Right? The red heat body is fucking like is. He's is a tank in that. Tank bro. He's just a he's tank so, in just, red well, heat. Well, Soviet tank, right? Yeah, <laughs> he is a Soviet. Yeah, tank. Yeah, he's a yeah. panzer tank. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. it'd be German, right? The panzers. Well, panzer tanks are no, are the strongest. They just tanks, European. Yeah. They're the strongest. Or, yeah. the, ti- or the tiger tank. I think tig- that, I think also a German tank. tank. Oh, that was also German. Kelly's heroes. Yeah. Oh shit. That was the fear. They had the tigers. Yeah, he's not German tank either. That's American. Let's just call him the M1 Abrams. Yeah, yeah. M1 Abrams. <laughs> Abrams. Yeah, again, he was... Um, uh, he was huge, though. Yeah, 41 when Red Heat came out. Man. Yeah. I mean, again, like all the tests in his system, he looked he looked incredible for 41. Yeah. 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 Like, and in terms of jawline, cheekbones, and hairstyle, I think Red Heat was his best. Yeah. His best, his best. Red Heat, <laughs> it's like all the comic artists that came afterwards, yeah. they had to draw a Russian. Yeah. They either drew Drago yeah. or they drew Arnold and Red Heat. Yeah. yeah. Danko. Yeah, they drew Danko. Danko. Yeah, it was either Danko. You're welcome. <laughs> it was either Danko or it was Drago. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. um... That was that was like that. That's how big and perfect he looked yeah, as a, as a Russian character, right? Absolutely, dead yeah. on. Especially when you put that Soviet militia hat. Oh yeah, oh, man. yeah. It's like if you gave like those guys like ten minutes to draw someone, draw a Russian like KGB yeah. agent, and they had no idea what to do. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what he looks like. They just do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's his name? Edmund Guinness. Mm. Edmund Guinness. I don't know if you guys know comic book yeah, artist yeah, yeah, Edmund Guinness, Batman, right? Super public, uh, Batman but, Superman artist. Yeah, yeah, but that was like that's how he draws all yeah, these guys. Yeah. They, he draws that big round yeah. Arnold musculature. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it looks terrific. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
he's pretty well respected. Um, the other, uh, one last thing I was talking about was like uh, he, he used to, we were talking about. I brought this up. Well, Bloodfather. Oh yeah, we had, I talked about this for the great trailer. I finally saw it. It yeah. it really is Martin Riggs yeah. as a washed up hitman. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh fucking. No Gibson. <laughs> it's about fucking time, he yeah, says. Yeah, fuck. But his his uh, director movie coming out, Hacksaw, Hacksaw Ridge. Ridge. Hacksaw getting Ridge. Great, it's getting great, uh, like, first glimpse of anyway. Like, people say, well, you know. He's a great director. Yes. So, uh, we were talking, uh, I think, me and him, and uh, he says, can you can give us to make a comeback? I said, maybe not as active, but definitely as a director. I think so. I think as a director, he has better. He has a better chance. I think so, yeah. I think so, yeah. That's the, a good. Um, uh, but after those tapes... Um, I think the tapes made him more famous now than any movie that he's ever been in. Yeah, uh, like, the like especially pants. like yeah, because like those uh, those Mel Gibson tapes on the answering machine. Yeah. Uh, have you guys seen the Howard Stern uh, prank calls when they just use those tapes? <laughs> no, but I can imagine. Yeah. They are because the, they're pretty aggressive. They're yeah, the funniest aggressive. things on yeah. the planet. They're the funniest things I've ever heard in my life. Wow. But yeah. the fact that Bloodfather's getting theater release, even though it's limited engagement, that's still a big step. What was that last one he did too? Right. Like, well, well, his Get the Gringo was VOD. No, the one before that where he played a cop and a kid too. He's like a, a washed up cop or a retired cop. Oh, his daughter oh, got Edge murdered. Edge of Darkness, great movie. Yeah, Edge of Darkness. Yeah, another really good movie. Really what was good. that one? Didn't he have that movie with um? We also did the Beaver. The Beaver, yeah, that's one that. Was, oh, that's right. That was one Jodie Foster, right? Jodie yeah. Foster, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. that was a credit. That was like a failure commercially. Yeah. Um. So. But um, get the Gringo. Oh, fantastic. Underrated, mm. man. Very underrated. Yeah. I mean, that, that really is a throwback movie. A throwback movie. It gives us chooses his roles wisely. He only did a Maria. Um, so El Machete, sorry. Yeah. And uh, Expandos must have been just for the fucking money. Oh, yeah. Just get a paycheck. Yeah, he knew, for sure he didn't say this is a great fucking movie by any means. No. Right? They were terrible movies. Terrible like, movies. Both of them were awful. Awful. So yeah. he, he must have did it for only the paycheck. Yeah, because Get the Gringo, I mean, I don't think he got quite the paycheck, but man, what a terrific movie. Yeah. Terrific story, terrific yeah. music, everything. Was it, have you seen Get the Gringo? Yeah. Fantastic movie. Great movie. So the fact that Gibson is doing Bloodfather, mm-hmm. uh, like he's, I think he's doing it for the role. I don't think he's doing it for the money. No, no. yeah, he doesn't need the money. Yeah, I think what he's doing is like, you know, if you're, he, he, like he's not. No one's gonna ask him to come back and do like a hundred million dollar movie. No, he knows he, that he's he, done doing he that. Yeah, so if, if he's gonna get back into acting or getting back into like the, the yeah, movie biz, he he's doing, he, I think he's doing it the right way. Yeah, well, it has to be a role that he cares about. Yeah, yeah a movie he cares about, and then he directs a movie that's gonna do well critically. Yeah, and yeah, he, and yeah. He, and I mean, I was telling Reggie this. I mean, in my our generation. Mm-hmm. I think he's the most versatile actor I've ever seen in my gen- our generation. We we went back and forth on this, and I think I always end up agreeing with you mm-hmm. because yeah, he. I mean, like it seems weird. You're know, like Mel Gibson. Like, is he a versatile actor? It's yeah. like man, but it yeah, sounds he's weird. kind of done it yeah. all. Yeah. Well, what genre has he not succeeded in? Yeah, I mean, when you look at okay, so like Buddy Cop. Yeah. Okay. So Sword and Sandals. Sword and Sandals. Science fiction. Science fiction. Science fiction. Right. Like he kind of does it all. Political thrillers. Political thriller. Yeah. Romantic comedy. Romantic comedy. What, what what woman wants was a huge. It, it was success. a big one, man. Yeah. That was a mind reader one, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that was huge. Yeah, um, Maverick. What would you call that? Well, Maverick that's a Western com- genre. Yeah, Western that's genre. like a Western subgenre, yeah. right? Uh, history. He's done um, Patriot. Yeah, he's done a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. He's, he, done, he's, yeah he's done peer, yeah. peer pieces as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's so, done a lot of work. And, he, and each one of those, he was a huge success, and he got critical acclaim for almost every one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm God, saying? Maverick was great. Yeah, it was great. Maverick, Maverick was a really good yeah. movie. Yeah. And if you want to talk about satire slash black comedy, well, payback. Yeah, exactly. Like he has succeeded in every role, yeah. and he did it well. Political thriller, like you mentioned. Yeah. Comedy, action, drama, buddy cop. Like he succeeded in every single... And yeah. you believed in the roles he did. You, you, you took it for his acting role. Yeah. Even yeah. the movie Signs. Yeah, yeah, again. He, he oh, was fucking a, Signs. I always yeah. forget about Signs, yeah. but yeah, you're right. He did a great job in that movie as well. Yeah. So... What other actor has succeeded in so many different genres so well? And then directed so well. Oh, and directed God. so well, yeah. I mean, that's like this whole different ball game. The directing he's done, Passion of the Christ, Apocalypto. Yeah. Braveheart, like, I mean. And again, like weird genres weird too, genres, right? Yeah, like, weird he genres. had three huge jumps right there. Yeah. Like yeah. Braveheart yeah. Yeah. To, to Passion of the Christ. Like, okay, maybe similar in like context or style. Yeah. But then Apocalypto? Yeah. Like a like, non-English, <laughs> non-English movie with yeah. non-white cast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's a huge deal. Well, yeah. think, think about that because like, you have all of that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when you, if, like, like one actor having all that talent, all that success, and then having... And it's just hitting the apex and, just t- and then turning the corner and just going down a completely different path. Well, that's path. Yeah. for you, right? I mean, that is that, crazy. That, that really is it. Yeah. So, would you, so, Vic, would you agree with still at, at this point at eight, whatever it is, that Kristen <laughs> is the most versatile, versatile actor, most successful versatile actor of our generation? It is hard to argue that point. Like, yeah. I mean, I would really have to sit down and think hard before I could actually straight up be like, no, you're wrong, Raji. 
and this is why. Yeah, like, no, I, 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 I have to go research that. Yeah, I'm that's and yeah, th- I'm in that camp as well. Yeah. yeah, that's why I tend to agree with that. Mm-hmm. That yeah, he really is versatile, and yeah. and not just versatile that he did it, but that he did it well. He did it well to where it sold. It sold. Yeah, yeah. yeah like he didn't do. Like, he wasn't the best at all of those, but mm-hmm. he did all of them well. Yeah, he did all of them very yeah. well. So he's he's very he like he's. His versatility can't be questioned no. at all. No, yeah. not at all. I, I think it's possible to be the best in every genre. Like, you, can, you can't, can't do yeah. That. No, but I mean, he comes pretty damn close. He, he comes pretty damn close. Yeah. And that is almost, that almost is impossible in itself. Yeah. Again, like, I'd, I'd love to argue the point, but you make a very good argument that I would say, yeah, I got to mm-hmm. go research that. Yeah. No, nah, he's, man, you, yeah. you want You want to hear yes really badly though, right? No, because I, 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 I love the guy for what his work. And, yeah. uh, and oh, well, you, you mean from us, you want to hear a yes? Yeah, from us. Oh, yeah, you yes. know, for now, absolutely yes. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I would I would say that, yeah, even looking into anybody else, it's hard to say no to it. Yeah. It's it would be hard for yeah. me to walk away and be like, like I, no, I, you're I, wrong. I, I yeah. see exactly where you're coming from. Yeah, and yeah. I, I feel like he, that appreciation of him is gone, which is too it's bad. Totally it's totally sad. Gone. It is sad. Yeah, know? it's really sad. You know, the thing is, I, I, the reason why I don't think it's sad, because from everything that he said mm-hmm. and all that stuff, he's, um, he's a rampant racist. Oh yeah, he is. He's, he's a, a raging racist. He's a raging racist. Yeah. Like he has deep-rooted psychological issues. He's a mm-hmm. he's a religious fucking nutcase. Yeah. And so, but is that what's sad about it though? Is that like he was and we didn't know? So like how he, he, he is, fell back into it? Yeah, because like, he was always like that. Yeah, we yeah. just didn't know. And we and he um he he hit it, and so yeah. he like he like uh, he wanted to follow his own like religious beliefs and like and they were like they were strong. He was like really like strong-headed well, about he it. He made like a a point way back when right about his wife i think mm-hmm. about how she wasn't catholic and they're like well what do you mean like if she's not catholic is she not catholic to heaven? enough yeah yeah mm-hmm. no was it enough or at all and, and he's like well she's like, she's the best person who i know who i've ever known she's like the kindest sweetest person but it's sad that she'll never go to heaven yeah some weird comment yeah like because that. yeah she said i think she said something along the lines of like she's not catholic enough mm-hmm. and so he took like whatever i think yeah he whatever religion he believed i think it was catholicism and he just took it. He, he turned the volume to eleven. Okay, so he's yeah. religious, not case. But is he truly a racist, though? Because I mean, we all use the N word. Uh, obviously, everybody's dropped it at some point. Yeah. yeah, It's like if anybody says, "Well, I've never said this. Or, I've never used a racial shit. slur." Yeah. It's you're full of shit. Yeah, we yeah. all said it. Yeah, but, said it but, it, but it, it's also in the context and the way and the way you say it. Because, yeah, yeah, because because not only are you at that point when you're that successful, you're not responsible for just only what you say, but what also what other people hear. Yeah, and so he's. He was never um, uh, like he—he he was his own worst enemy. Yeah, but he wouldn't have succeeded as much as he did if he was a rampant racist. Though, Danny Glover says he loves him, and they got along so well. You know. Yeah, but um, the only thing is, like, he's but he but it's it's known that he's a rampant anti-Semite. Okay, that's his okay, anti-Semite is one thing. That's racist. Okay. That, yeah, that, that's a racist. Okay, anti-Semite is like he's, he's anti-Jew basically, right? Yeah. Well, he's the Jewish people are. Yeah. Semitic. So is like, that what it is? Yeah. yeah. So, he, yeah. so I, can, I can see the bias against Jewish people, right? For him on For him. And his size, a, as a Catholic. As a Catholic, though, but that's almost like a religious connotation, right? Yeah. But blacks, Chinese, I don't think he's like, oh, I hate those guys too. Oh, I hate the Indians too. I don't well, did you, um, did you did you hear the, the the tapes? Yeah, what he's saying it to the girl. I don't think he meant to like, say it as a... No, I think he's racist. I think he's racist, yeah. yeah. I think he's I yeah. think he's brutally I, racist. Yeah, I, I, think, I, can, I yeah. think I think you can slap that label on him. Yeah, I think you're allowed think to put so. that label onto him. And the thing is, too, is it's not just... that's. That's not just us. That's everybody. Like, yeah. Obviously, like you know, if I knew, um, if if me and you made movies together, all all like for years, like Danny Glo- Danny Glover did with him, mm-hmm. and I'd be like, I'm not gonna throw my relationship with you because this stuff ha- happened to you. Like we like that's like me and you. We grew up together, right? I wouldn't be like, I would I would, I would try to come to your defense. As, would, as an example, right? Like that whole statement The Rock made after uh, Hogan said all that stuff. Like yeah. Hogan didn't like violently spit out racial slurs. He used it in a very casual manner. So, but then again, when he, uh, when the rock said that, you know, I've known Hulk Hogan my whole, my whole life, pretty much most of my life, my father helped train yeah, him, yeah, yeah. but, um, I've never known him to be a racist, but sometimes people, people say some dumb shit behind closed doors. Yeah. That, that's generally what he said. I, I'm paraphrasing yeah, that yeah, a lot. Yeah, I guess pretty much everybody said But that. I mean, he wasn't saying things like, you know, we all say it. I said it. You said, but he said like, you know, everybody says some dumb things behind closed doors. Maybe let it go. That's one thing. Like yeah. Hogan was pretty, uh, like, like loosey goosey on the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Whereas... Like Mel Gibson was pretty aggressive. Like he was full aggro. Yeah. Hate. Yeah. And also he had like he had severe anger issues as that's well. What yeah. That's yeah. what I think it is. That's what I think it is. So you think it ramps up with his but, anger? But that's what I think it is. But the thing yeah. is, like, but with 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 uh, anger, like how how like 
it's very hard to argue that that racism manifests itself from just ha- being angry. Just being angry. Just being angry. I think it's like being an alcoholic or yeah. being drunk, right? Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna amplify. Yeah, like, yeah, because yeah. if you're yeah. If, yeah, if you're racist and you're, and you're drunk, you're saying racist things. You'd be like, oh, he's just oh, he's wasted, right? But if yeah. you're if like he had uh like, he had a litany of like. Yeah. serious mental issues yeah well that's what it is mental yeah. issues but no but but, yeah. but, right. but you're saying so basically you're saying that he's not a racist no no i'm not saying he's not 100 percent racist but i don't think he's like full-fledged oh, i hate indians chinese you, you just want to still be a fan and you don't want <laughs> you don't want to be you don't feel like you're a fan of a racist i don't i don't feel he's compl- like i don't think you can survive to hollywood and be successful all this so, you see, okay, so you're saying because so basically what you're saying is that we we think he belongs in the ku klux klan so, no, I, I don't think no, he belongs in the clan. Not. That's not true. But, yeah, no, no. But, th- yeah, I mean, not, who knows? Yeah, yeah, we're we not, don't know. Yeah, yeah, we're not saying that. Yeah, I'm we just, don't know. Maybe he wants to be. We yeah. have no idea. We're just uh, we're just seeing that his like you you from what I've seen from everything we've heard, um, you, the evidence the evidence is there. Like, yeah. If I, if, I, if I had to slap the label on him, I I would. Yeah. Like yeah. I, that that's not to say I'm not going to watch a movie he puts out there. Absolutely. I'm still going to watch it. It's hard to We've just talked about how he's a prolific and well respected actor. But even a hardcore racist, like you say, like you. Would have made a movie like Apocalypto? Yeah, sure. Why not? I just find that I just I don't know. I I think he has probably racist tendencies. We all do, to a certain degree. But I don't think he's like I hate this like a rabid hate spewing. Yeah, I don't like think a hate that. monger. Yeah, I don't a hate monger. That. I don't think yeah. he's that. No, no, I don't. No, I don't think he's that. But hmm. um, like there's um, there's I think there's a volume you can have of racism. Like there's um, everyone says like because real racism is quiet. And the thing is too is that I think once you reach that, once you attain that level of success, mm-hmm. there's nothing to prepare you for all this shit that you're oh, gonna go no. through. Yeah. And uh, Mel Gibson, I don't think he he properly prepared himself for it. No, not think, at all. I think he's always had issues, but he yep. kept, kept it buried and buried, and then it exploded, and then everything went into f- free fall. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Like, were he if he was younger and did the same thing mm-hmm. and did an apology tour and said I'm gonna go get some help, do you think it would have been it would have been different? I think so. And then had he done it again 25 years later, I fell off the wagon. Apology tour. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get some help. Well, how many apology tours can you do, I guess? Tons. I think people do them all over and over again. Yeah, Robert Downey yeah. Jr. did like three during his little... No, no, that's different though. That's personal substance abuse issues, right? But if you're talking about like racial... Yeah, like that's, racial. That's yeah, different. Yeah. That, that that's is hard, different. That's hard to forgive. That is hard to forgive. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, again, it comes back to why people. they're not forgiving him. Yeah. They're not. Yeah, yeah because yeah, no one's going to... This day and age, after the shootings, yeah. everything, all that stuff, there's no way. Yeah, yeah. so in... In the conversation of like stereotypes in Hollywood, because like that's kind of like where we're going at right now. Mm-hmm. How do you guys feel about things like the Great Wall and the Last Samurai, where Matt Damon plays that white you savior. know the white savior character, yeah, right? And like then him. and and then is he though? Because the the director already has said that he's not the hero; he's just one character from one part of the world. Yeah, I'm gonna judge that when I see the movie. when, when I see the movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But but, um, but, look at the but they're but they're the late. It's a Matt Damon movie. But it's a Matt Damon though. movie. Yeah. That's the problem, right? Yeah, it's told as a Matt Damon. Yeah, movie. yeah. So. like Scarlett Johansson. She yeah. could have said no. I'm not gonna play a Japanese character. Yeah. Named like Makamoto. Oh, for a, Ghost in the for Shell. For Ghost in the Shell. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm not uh, gonna play that character. She could have just said, "I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna walk away." Right. Yeah. But instead, she took the job. Mm-hmm. Could Matt Damon have done the same thing? Could he have said, "Like, don't put my face in the posters"? Actually, Will it totally sell without him? No. Yeah. No, because they knew if because you put that if because. The more the normal movie going audience who's pretty brainless when it comes to movies, mm-hmm. I'll will, totally agree with that. Yeah, yeah. They will um they will look at the poster and if you see his his name next to something as not the first one on the left hand side or it's not in the middle. Yeah, they're gonna be like, why am I gonna see this movie? Exactly. Yeah. See, that's why like with Tom Cruise and Last Samurai, he wasn't the Last Samurai. Like his character wasn't the Last Samurai. No. It was a different character yeah. altogether, right? Yeah. yeah. So when you watch the movie, like, oh shit! So he's like a shit bag alcoholic who's on the wrong side of the war and yeah. realizes his side is wrong. Like, he didn't do anything to be a savior character at no, all. No, in no. fact, he did the opposite. He went against his own yeah. kind. That he went fantastic. against his own kind, yeah. fantastic. Which, like, redeems that movie. It totally redeems it the totally movie. It totally redeems 100%. it. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Like, as I've always said, like, as a minority that got to watch movies and never really had a, a character representing me, that's the kind of movie that, like, if you're going to make a movie yeah, the white guy in it in, another, in another part of the world. Yeah, and that's the genius of Tom Cruise. I think he saw, he, I think he saw that. Yeah. Right? He always plays yeah. like against what you think he's gonna yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, like he's yeah. That's what like what Tom Cruise. He just he he'll dirty he, himself up. He'll yeah. dirty himself yeah, yeah. up, and he will go like he'll do all the hard work it takes to to make the movie. Yeah, and like I saw the making Mission Impossible too. Even John Woo was like, "Fuck," he's like, "Are you sure you want to do this?" Yeah, and he's like, "No, I want the I want the knife right ne- right next to my eye. That's all real." Oh, wow. Yeah, everything he did. That's even, intense. Yeah, man. he's like everything. And even John Woo was like, "Hold, I can't even watch." <laughs> that's a hey, crazy director you yeah. kind of have to yeah exactly and that's John Woo John Woo's seen and done the worst like, <laughs> yeah I mean like for everything he's done in, in uh, Chinese cinema yeah, yeah. everything in Hong yeah. Kong it was, it's like that's how Hong Kong yeah he's done some like crazy. crazy stuff yeah he is the biggest star of our generation Tom Cruise 
Oh yeah. Nobody has been more a this more years than he than our generation. Nobody still draws to the box office. No. Like nobody does. Nobody does. George Clooney does not draw to the box office. He Brad a, Pitt does not draw to the box well, office. George Clooney got popular what early two thousands movies. Yeah, I'd say like late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah, I think he Max, was, yeah. I think he was like after Ocean's Eleven. Yeah. That's when he started like um, he took that rampant acceleration into uh, popularity. With Soderbergh, the uh, the movie he did a few with him, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, all but, that. Yeah, but he was like a well known, but he's not like a box office superstar. Yeah, his movies were like yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, he he's more of like a. He was um, like consistent quality. Yeah, yeah. he was. Yeah, he's like yeah. he worked, and he worked. I think he works the best in ensemble movies. Yep. You know, yeah. like you know, we say like how Samuel Jackson can't carry a movie by himself. He always needs. He needs to be part of something. Hey man, Shaft was great. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shaft was awesome. I'll give. I'll give you that. Shaft was great. Yeah, but did you, like, what was the last time you saw Samuel Jackson like lead a, lead. a movie? Yeah. In a big movie. Never. Yeah, he doesn't do it. He doesn't do it. He yeah. like, he's smart about it. And yeah, so he I'll, plays I'll really good supporting characters. Yeah, like snakes on a plane. Like, you know, like who gives a shit about that? One Seven was good though. You know, I've never seen that. Oh, really? It's yeah, good. that was years 7 is actually not too bad either. Yeah. It's actually Shit, I'm actually contradicting my point here. <laughs> yeah, but these movies are like fucking... <laughs> yeah, but it's like few and far between. <laughs> these are like... <laughs> if I pay a dollar... If I yeah. Pay, those are TBS on a Sunday, okay? Yeah. <laughs> TBS Lake, edits Lake the Plastic, shit out of that thing too. Huh? Lake Placid, was he in that too? No. No. No, no Lake Placid. No, no, God, no, Lake, Lake Placid no. is terrific. No, who am I thinking about? Well, you played the, ba- the bad cop. The bad cop. Yeah. Is, it, is the that neighbor, what? the neighbor? Oh, the neighbor. The neighbor. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what is that movie called again? It is like Lake something, isn't Lake it? Something, I thought like was... Lake something Drive. Oh, maybe that's what. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think Lake Placid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like Lake something Drive. Yeah. Lake Shore Drive. Yeah, something. Lake is, Shore is that Drive. what it is? I think that's what it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That was actually a decent movie, but he wasn't. Well, actually, well, he's the bad guy. He's kind of the lead. Yeah, because the other guy was. Do you remember his name? I don't remember. His name. Yeah, it was um, Patrick Wilson. Patrick Wilson, yeah, I think yeah, that's right. He was the other guy. But he wasn't like well known as Samuel Jackson. No, nobody knew who he was then. No, no yeah, no one yeah. gives a shit. They wanted to see the movie. Because he was still Jackson. doing like ten movies a year. Yeah, yeah, because he wanted to get known. Yeah, which is what, which is good for him, right? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, his best. I think his best role is still uh, in um, Coming to America. But, oh, the cameo as a robber, the, the robber, the, the yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. the burglar, yeah. not the burglar, the uh, the armed robbery, yeah, yeah. robbery, yeah, and in in McDonald's, <laughs> McDowell's, McDowell's, yeah, McDowell's. They got the golden arches. They got the. We got the golden arcs. You said Burbs is number one for you. For me. Burbs is my number two after Coming to America. Coming to America is a pretty terrific number one, though. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's a pretty terrific number one. Soul yeah. Glow. <laughs> Just let your soul go. Man, Soul Glow was great. Yeah. Soul Glow. Yeah. Eric to Soul. The Jerry Curl. Who would have thought he would have succeeded on ER? Uh, then these are your top, yeah. these are your favorite, like, comedies? Yeah. Comedies, yeah. Shit, what's mine? The one that lasted the hardest in when I first saw it. There's there's a there's a, a lot bunch. out there. If yeah. I think, if, okay, I could, I could throw one out there. Like when I saw it for the first time, I just thought I just laughed out loud. I I, I fell on the floor laughing. It was um it was Top Secret with Val Kilmer. Top Secret is pretty good. Yeah. Top Secret. Who was the the old guy in the library? Peter Cushing, right? Peter Cushing. Yeah. That whole sequence being shot backwards. Yeah. That was terrific. That was unreal. I mean, I don't think I've seen a movie that that long of a sequence was such an incredible practical effect. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, oh, that was crazy, yeah, man. Made by those those uh, what was it those Zucker Zuckers, Zucker, yeah, yeah, the Zuckers who uh, yeah. made all those airplane movies. Yeah, man, all the like, tons of great stuff. Yeah, Val Kilmer just in his prime. Just that unreal. era was great for yeah. goofy comedy. Goofy, goofy comedy, comedies, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Another one, um, and yeah, I think I was telling Raji, I just went on a like childhood movie buying spree, mm-hmm. and uh, one golden gem I think people forget about is Real Genius. Oh, Real Genius, man! I I think I saw that once. That was another uh, Val Kilmer, right? Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. movie is for guess, me. That's yeah. one of my favorite movies. These movies are not well known, really. I mean, they're not really. Yeah, yeah. 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 They're not like like John Hughes kind of owned that era, yeah. right? Yeah, his. Oh uh, yeah, like Ferris Bueller's Day Off. You name yeah. Sixteen Candles. We everything, right? So yeah. like it's it was good to see that. Um, uh, they th- those underground movies like uh, yeah. I guess like Real Genius wasn't really an underground movie, but like uh, yeah, just the whole movie is like. It just takes you back to your childhood. Yeah, yeah, and I love I love those kind of movies. Those yeah. those were all right. Yeah, yeah, they weren't bad at all. But yeah, it was weird how there was like almost like a non John Hughes John Hughes era happening. Era happening. Yeah, yeah. And it was guys like the Zuckers doing it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Uh, it was yeah. It was a treat because a lot of people will concentrate on eighties movies. The first thing they think of is like for comedies, everything related to um, John Hughes. Yeah, no, it's true. Yeah, like or, if you think like the, like Murphy, coming of age Eddie comedies, Murphy, yeah, exactly. Eddie Murphy, yeah. But nobody thinks of real genius in Top yeah, Secret. Nobody ever says that. Nobody, nobody says does. airplane. Nobody says the naked gun. Yeah, nobody yeah. does. And nobody yeah, and they're gun, all yeah. excellent. They're, 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 <laughs> O.J. Simpson, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing beats. Yeah, they're just they're they're great movies. So I just um they're they're gems that people should really I think everyone should watch and yeah. just yeah. be like wow. Like, Top I, Secret and uh, Real Genius are someone's movies that people would be interested to see because they have no idea.
Like they're about twenty five years old now. Yeah. They've never seen those movies. They don't know about. They never them. even heard of it. No, nope. yeah. they have no idea. They think Thug, it... but they think, oh yeah, the guy in Top Gun. That's that movie he did. Man, yeah. nobody has. Nobody thinks of Thunderheart. Oh, another man. Nobody thinks of Thunderheart. Rated, man. Very Unbelievable movie. Yeah. movie. Yeah. I think Val Kilmer. I think Thunderheart. Yeah. yeah. What an incredible movie. Yeah, Thunderheart was fantastic. Uh, way better than I expected when I watched yeah, it. Yeah, when you watched it, it came out of nowhere. Yeah, it came out of nowhere. Tombstone came out of nowhere, <laughs> yes, right? That's Tombstone right. was yeah, yeah, just jaw-droppingly good. Yeah. yeah, what an incredible movie. Yeah. yeah. You know but what I mean? Yeah, there was um actually, you know, that's one movie I think I might get a lot of hate for this is that uh one movie that I think has not we just mentioned it that I don't I can't watch anymore or just refuse to is Top Gun. Top Gun. Yeah. Wow. Did we did we mention Top Gun? I can I can I I, would, I can't watch it. Like I would watch it with like with Raji or I could watch it with you. We could just sit yeah. down and, and break down the movie, but I cannot watch that movie. Yeah, anymore. you can't sit down on your own and throw it in the DVD and be like, I'm gonna watch Top I Gun. Can't, I can't. You just had a Top Gun moment. I you, and you just I mean, you, you, yeah. didn't you just get the Blu-ray on 3D? I got the 3D Blu-ray and I loved it. Yeah. But I, I mean, I can't watch it every day. Yeah, yeah it's not it, a movie like, you go back I, to. No. no, never at all. Like I would never like honestly like unless like. It was like a movie night or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I was like, if somebody wanted to watch it, I'm like, yeah, I'll watch Top Gun with you. It's not a big deal. Top Gun. And it's, not, mean, it's not like I'm bored of it. It's just yeah, like, you're I'm, just, I'm just like, you know what? Like it's, It hasn't stood the test of time for me. You know, it really, it kind of doesn't. Yeah. It's one of those movies where it's got like a lot of nostalgia to it. Tons of nostalgia tons, to it. Tons. it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But it didn't ever leave the 80s. Yeah. And that, yeah. that's the thing. It's, that's, that's the problem. It doesn't have, for me, it doesn't have any uh, anything else but nostalgia value. Yeah, that's what it is. And it doesn't have like, um, oh, oh, I love that scene. I love that scene or whatever. Yeah. It's just more like, um, oh, I remember when I was a kid, I'd watch Top Gun. But you love the characters though. The, yeah, the, all the characters, they're all, they're all, they're great. They're all here's, a bunch of gay guys. Here's my question though. <laughs> like, the, the volleyball scene, yeah, they're they're, all... those guys are having a hard time figuring their lives out right yeah. there. <laughs> but um, awesome. Top Gun uh, not, not, I mean, I think it was the beginning of that Bruckheimer Simpson yep. era, right? Mm-hmm. With like Beverly Hills Cop, I think maybe it was like the first one. Yeah. But I wonder if Top Gun was the beginning of that formula and that's why you like it so much because that Bruckheimer Simpson formula lasted a long time. Yeah. Like, all the way up until, um, Simpson died, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. uh, Bad Boys, even Bad Boys yeah. felt like Top Gun. Yeah. 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 yeah, they did. Yeah. That look, the like saturated colors, that HDR feel to HDR everything. Like it had a really yeah, high, right. like high dynamic feel to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The sound was ramped up. Like yeah. everything, if an engine roared in Top Gun, or that Porsche started in Bad Boys, same yeah. feel, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. There was, um. But the Bad Boys didn't have this. Well, actually, I guess they did. The, the soundtrack, which Top Gun is amazing. You know, the soundtrack to Bad Boys for that era it was fantastic it was fantastic yeah, absolutely that yeah. was an incredible sound. and not yeah. just because they had the bad boys or whatever because like that that's um oh man I, I can't remember who the composer was don't think it was Hans Zimmer it was no it's uh, Carlos it was something Mencia no, 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 no. It was, it was Carlos Mencia. No, not Carlos Mencia. He's that. He's that. Definitely sh- wasn't him. Yeah, he's that. He'll sh- tell you it was him. Yeah, though, it's, he's that shitty hat comic. Yeah, <laughs> Michael Kamen, I believe, is Michael Kamen. That's right. Yeah, he did the soundtrack, and it was just like Carlos incredible. Mancio, why the fuck did I say that? <laughs> what a fucking douche! I hate that guy. He got a lot of hate, man. Yeah, he's, he's on the Mark Mancina. Mark Mancina. Mark that's Mancina. what I meant to say. There Mark. you go, Mark Mancina. God damn it! Sorry, I ruined the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined nothing. Yeah, Michael Kamen was um Die Hard. Is what it was. Die Hard of the oh, Vengeance. Right. right yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a uh, man. Great soundtrack, man. It was oh, solid. Yeah, the absolutely. score was good. The soundtrack yeah. was good. Yeah. And Top Gun had oh, sorry at all, right? The iconic soundtrack. Yeah, I, mean, I think Top Gun was the beginning. Yeah. Well, Top Gun song is still played today. Um, uh, Take my breath away. Take your breath away. Yeah, it, yeah, every '80s part that you can go. And, <laughs> yeah. And what was <laughs> the uh, slow dance moment? Uh, Fly me, uh, Danger Zone. Danger Zone. What, what's his name? It's right. It's right there. Kenny Loggins. Kenny Loggins. Yeah. I mean, those those are a big deal. Mighty right? Wings by um, <laughs> Archer. Yeah. Danger Zone. Danger Zone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you watch Archer at all? I've seen one. Archer's episode. my life. Yeah, you need to get into that show. That show is yeah, it's pretty great. Fantastic. That's yeah, no, but that that was I think that's is the nostalgia of the way it looked yeah. more than anything else. Well, oh yeah. If you look at Tom Cruise, he he doesn't look like an '80s guy in there really. The hairstyle is not an '80s hairstyle. I mean, hairstyle. Could nah, have... he's an '80s frat boy douchebag. Like he, his hairstyle absolutely was yeah, an '80s frat yeah, boy. Yeah, he's douche. a real douchebag. That, that look. I will argue is the iconic '80s look. The Tom Cruise look. That in Top Gun and Risky Business, which is roughly the same Risky look. Risky Business, yes. The that head is roughly the same. The hair is totally different, though. The hair is '80s. Risky Business is '80s. Okay, I'll I'll give him like a close crop marine version of Risky <laughs> Business, but it's roughly the same hair. Okay, even Val Kilmer. He's the same guy. Right. Val Kilmer is definitely '80s hair in that. The flat yeah. top. The no, Iceman flat yeah, top. Just, yeah, but it, it, it's like a long spike. Yeah, it's, it's a long spike flat yeah. top. That hairstyle looks sexy today. <laughs> I will leave that up to you, man. Y
Uh, Gooch is, he just looks unkept. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that unkept look. He, he's a bit of a hillbilly. Yeah, yeah he's a total hillbilly. Yeah. But it, it, when you think of 80s movies, you don't say, okay, Tyler has all like 80s. Like, it, yeah. It's, I'll buy that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's yeah. it's more, it's got more of a military look. Exactly. That yeah. It does have a, like yeah. an 80s exactly. vibe to it yeah. as far as the characters. Yeah, right. but, but I'll agree with you that it hasn't aged well. Yeah, it hasn't aged. Actually, well I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. I thought, I thought <laughs> you mentioned Turn that. Turn that table on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The 3D version is actually pretty good. Yeah. I was pretty impressed. Looks by it. really good. Yeah. The, re- good the, the reviews were really good, so mm-hmm. I thought I'll pick it up because I like I love 3D personally. Yeah. And I was really impressed how they did it. Man, that's yeah. um, yeah, that's something I'm not like looking forward to at all. I hate 3D. Yeah, you're saying you don't like 3D. Oh, man, yeah. I hate it so much. There, there, there's certain movies that I like 3D in, mm-hmm. uh, like when they're made for 3D. Like, yeah, that's, like, that's, like, yeah. Like, like Tron, for example. Like Tron Legacy. Like yeah. that, that movie you had to see in 3D. I'll tell you, I um, I actually personally hate made-for-3D movies. Like, I did not like the way Avatar looked in 3D. Mm-hmm. I, would, I would rather have watched it without. Now, I know that he sets all the shots up with the right amount of time for your mind to get ready for it. Mm-hmm. My biggest beef, and we've talked about this, is that when you have a movie like that, he directs you at what you're supposed to be looking at. So the mm-hmm. soft focus in the background will be in soft focus. Yeah. But your brain wants to look at it and you can't focus on it. So you're forced to look at what you're looking at. Oh yeah, because the background's going to be all fade. It's going to, yeah, it's like the, so you, the bokeh so you, effect. Yeah, so you can't, so you can't really appreciate it. You can't appreciate yeah. it, right? So there's no point in shooting it. There's no, yeah, why are you showing it to me? Yeah. Because I'm going to want to look at it. Yeah. But I can't, my brain starts to get mad at me. And yeah. that's when the headaches start. And that's when the problems begin, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas a lot of movies that aren't shot for 3D, they have like a, a like a wide range of focus. You can see all the background as well. Yeah, that's what that's when I, when I watched The Martian in uh, yeah. in 3D. Uh, well, no, actually The Martian, when you, you watch it in 3D, um, and then I watched it in 4K. Mm-hmm. The the 4K version, it doesn't look better because of the, the image quality. It's mm-hmm. because the draw distance is so much better. Yeah. So you can watch it in just regular 2D. The depth of the canvas is it's so much, much better, better because yeah. you can, and you can Way focus better. back there as well. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, I really believe that 4k i mean as much as there's that debate we always talk about and whatnot like is it necessary yet i don't think it's necessary yet Mm -hmm. but when it hits its peak is going to be for me anyway like better than 3d i I don't really care much for 3d i just want to see a really well done yeah because yeah yeah because like the because the 4k and 3d will never go together like no they they even said like you know either you get the 3d blu-ray or you can get the 4k 4K. version so it best it goes in your preference then I yeah, love, it goes to preference. It's totally, it's total yeah, preference. I yeah. love 3D because I'm yeah. watching Immortals. Yeah, and 3D is fantastic. You, yeah, you loved Immortals, right? Yeah, yeah. Surprisingly good 3D though. <laughs> yeah, very good 3D. Actually, I you know mean, what? I was really shocked by the sequence. Not to interrupt you, the no, sequence no, with um, uh, what's his name? Who's the the main villain he's, there? Oh, oh, uh, Mickey Rourke. Whatever. Mickey Rourke, but his character when he's in the dark shooting the arrow. Yeah. Damn, that looked really good. Oh, yeah. But Tarsem Singh. Yeah. Like God, that guy makes great movies. Like, uh, very yeah. Visually, very yeah, he, yeah, he's a good, he's yeah. a good visual director. Like the cell, the cell. Oh man, oh my yeah. God, the cell. Yeah, like that was that was so ahead of its time. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was that one movie he did with uh, the stories, the four different stories? Of the oh, different characters? um, I, I know what you're talking about. Shit. The the dude from uh, Pushing Daisies. Oh, um, Raji. The uh, Ronan, the accuser. He's the main guy in that movie. Oh. His name is um, the character, the the actor. I can't remember his name right now, but he played Ronan the Accuser. He was the main character in that. Lee Lee Pace. Lee Pace. Yeah. Lee Pace plays the main guy in that, and he's a stunt oh, man who gets tip. injured and he's in a hospital bed. The Fall. The Fall. The Fall. Yeah. Excellent movie. And looks terrific. Oh, man, yeah. yeah, that that's a very good movie. Yeah. And uh, yeah, because I think the actually one that what's that one three D movie we saw? Oh yeah. Uh, underrated movie completely. I know what you're gonna say. Yeah, you know what I'm gonna say. And you love it this too, Vic. Yeah, is Dread. Oh, yeah, Dread is phenomenal. Dread's on. Dread's awesome. But that that needs a Netflix series. Yeah. Right, but watching Dread 3D is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it was really well put together. The transfer yeah. was excellent. Yeah. the film quality uh, on my TV it looked like it was fantastic. It was I couldn't believe how good the, the film was. And it had looked. genuine moments that were designed for that guy who who the director was. It was. Oh, uh, jeez. I don't like, really again, it was like another another guy was on the tip of my brain there, yeah. but he he made that clearly. He was thinking about it when he made yeah, that he, shot. Yeah, he lo- yeah, and he loved the comics. Yeah. that was based on. What he a great badass character too. Yeah, like fucking terrific yeah, character. They're, yeah, they're saying they're probably gonna they they're saying that they might go ahead with the sequel. The well, he's um he's kind of lobbying for it. Nothing has gone ahead yet. This is one of the one the few the few like non big budget major movies I'm really like keep my eye on. Mm-hmm. But um as far as that Netflix series goes, that might go ahead, but it's all talk. Like. Everything is all talk yet, but you never know. I mean, if enough guys get the buzz on it, yeah, that's true. Yeah, just just give me like a three episode Netflix series. Yeah, you know, fifty minutes, sixty minutes per episode, I'll be happy, man. If I see the word Netflix on anything, I'll watch it. Yeah, I absolutely. just started Stranger Things. Stranger Things is fantastic. Holy shit! Yeah. I'm on episode three now, so no spoilers here. No, no, no. What, yeah. what is Stranger Things? It's like uh, the perfect amalgam. 
to, of to 80s. yeah everything Spielberg and Stephen King mixed oh, wow. into one story. Yeah, and it has my childhood crush Winona Ryder in it. Yeah, Winona oh, Ryder's in it. She's unreal in that yeah. that series. She's got a lot of flack for uh, for certain mothers groups and stuff, huh? They're all like, how can you play a fuck mother if you've bitches. never been a mother? It's like, fuck, well, fuck how do you play a CIA care. agent when you've never been a CIA yeah, agent? Exactly. How do you play an alien or vampire when you've never been an alien or vampire? You know what? You do some research. You're, you're, you have empathy for mothers, don't you? You're mm-hmm. nice to little kids, aren't you? Do I see a little kid and kick him? No, I like kids. Yeah. So I can pretend to be a father mm-hmm. or a mother. It's not hard to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, how can you be a pet owner if you've never owned a pet in a movie? Yeah. Are you an idiot? Yeah. Jesus Christ, man. She's doing that. Like, she's knocking it out of the park yeah, in that show. She's unreal in that show. Man. And, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of hers. Like, uh, How far into the show are you? Actually, I just, got, I just watched the first two seasons. The first two, two episodes. First sorry. two episodes. Yeah. I'm, in, I'm in three now. Yeah. And it's become like, I don't want to burn through it. I, I don't like binge watching things. No, yeah, me either. The so only, I'm going like one every other day. Yeah, the only show I've actually binge watched was uh, Narcos. Yeah, I hear nothing but good things about oh that. Oh my too. God, bro. It's freaking amazing. Yeah, yeah Narcos. Uh, yeah, list, whoever's listening, yeah, just. Fuck, watch yeah, just turn your brain off and just watch that show. It's That's fantastic. Excellent. Best TV show I've seen in years. But so, I like it better than Daredevil. Really? Oh wow. Yeah. You, you know what? Um, it's it, for me, it's up there. Yeah, if not better. Over over Daredevil. Yeah, because you know, the thing is, every episode is like a movie. Yeah. Really? You yeah. have to give that a go. Yeah, and it's not even like it's not, it's not it it it, it has real life footage of the actual like arrests, yeah. deaths, all that stuff, and they mix it in with the um, high production value. Wow. The guy who plays um the actor who plays Pablo Pablo is. Jesus Christ, he's, he's on another spot planet. on, huh? He's spot on. That's um, that's kind of like we were. Well, we just finished talking about Miami Vice last week or so. Jan Hammer, excellent scores. But I mean, um, yeah. talking about uh, about Narcos and whatnot, was it getting the push more because Cocaine Cowboys kind of had that redo? I don't know on Netflix. Most uh, people that watch it, I don't think know about Cocaine. A lot of people don't know about Cocaine Cowboys. The first Probably cut, not. I yeah, enjoyed I more it. than the second cut. Yeah, I, I've seen the first one. I haven't seen the second one, but I don't. Well, I don't, no, no. Cocaine, cocaine Cowboys, the first cut. Cocaine Cowboys, um, one. Yeah, that's what I mean. Has like a redo, one. that was uh, extended music. They changed music quite a bit. It was very different. I mean, yeah, having seen the first one with with the music, it was phenomenal. Right, Jan yeah. Hammer, Jan Hammer did the music for that right. as well. I don't think people are basing it on that. Yeah. It's just getting quick, crazy rave reviews, right? It's Plus, just it's a it. drug movie. Yeah. And if, and if you like, like, I don't know. Does that have Scarface tendencies to you? Um, the feel a, a little bit. Okay, it takes like the premise of like what Scarface kind of like has. Like what if Tony Montana was still in Cuba? Yeah, but it like it ramps it up to like, Jesus, like you like, it, like you can't believe how much this guy, what this guy could do yeah. and what he, and who he was and how much control he had. Yeah. It's crazy. And, and they don't hold anything back with that. Like, uh, Oh no. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Brutal. They don't, they, wow. It's completely yeah, it's, like, yeah, ball to a wall. It's definitely not PG 13. You'll have to give it a go. Um, yeah. But then again, Netflix, right? Yep. If Netflix. they produce a program, you know, it's going to be good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Pretty awesome. Yeah, and the thing yeah. is, you saw the progression of how much better. Like, you know, like when you see the progression of like how a show gets better and better, the mm-hmm. episodes get better and better. Like you know, they start off and like you know, we'll start with this episode. Like, oh, you know what? It'll get better as you know, it gets the better production quality. See, this all podcast those. was shit on episode one, but yeah. I mean, yeah, but by they, now we're looking all right. Yeah, and the thing is, <laughs> this this series starts unreal first episode. First episode in. Yeah, yeah. if wow. you watch first episode, you're like, I'm watching the series now. Yeah, I, I like those roller coasters where it starts at the top. Yeah, and it just keeps on going. Yeah, and like how first, much higher is this thing gonna go? Yeah, like you, like you never want to root for the bad guy, yeah. but like Pablo Escobar, you're just sitting there, you're like, this guy fucking. No wonder he was loved in his country. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Because, I mean, he he gave the big fuck you to everybody else yeah. but the yeah, country, right? exactly. And it wasn't like Saddam Hussein where he just took all the money for himself. Like yeah. He built hospitals. He built schools. He did all that shit. Yeah. Man. But, Every time I think about a movie where it's like, you, you don't want to root for the bad guy. Not to go weirdly off topic here. Like, I just saw Gone Girl again. And it's like one of those characters like, fuck, she's a great character. Like, I don't want to root for her. At first, like, oh, I hope she gets it. I hope they freaking nail her to the wall yeah spoiler then, alert, but <laughs> yeah spoiler and then halfway through you're like god i hope she gets away with everything oh, wow. and what she kind of does i'm like yes oh good. man good she did rosemont for Pike, her i oh my god i do what? i do anything for her oh man I, like, I, and she has no idea who i am <laughs> no idea well you never know uh, rosemont pike if you're watching if you're watching uh, but um yeah what an excellent excellent character yeah like beginning to end yeah mm-hmm. i mean for villains one of the best oh, there yeah. are really good characters both heroic and villainous for women yeah they just we're not we're not getting them like yeah. what's that you're next i don't know if you've seen you're next oh, not, i uh, don't want to spoil it the, the, the horror movie the horror movie yeah i've seen that that chick is my hero oh, she was awesome in that. she is like more john mcclain than john mcclain yeah she's gorgeous oh, really? she's gorgeous oh, I haven't, yo, I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. yeah i mean she's got like she's a total package she's but number, beautiful too. more than that it's like her character like the the way she kind of enters the story mm-hmm. and when you learn about her you're like yeah i could buy that 
there's nothing really unrealistic about the way she yeah. develops. Mm -hmm. And she turns into the most aggressive, aggro, capable badass in, I would say, the last five, six years. Yeah, really. Yeah. In movies, yeah. It's a great movie, man. It's actually surprising. Yeah. I liked it. As you, oh, yeah. Next. yeah. Excellent movie. Yeah. I oh, mean, okay. yeah, I'm gonna get that a try. The yeah. twist isn't that there's a house full of bad guys. Mm -hmm. The twist is there's a house full of one motherfucker, and she is gonna ruin their life. Oh wait, wait. who's in that movie? That's um, uh, it's no really names. a bunch of no names. No names. No names? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. It, I think the whole thing is like shot in Australia or well, something well, like that. that. I would be surprised. Yeah, because really, it's like all no names in yeah. a house. Like it's a house. We're going to a house. We're gonna like rob and slash a house full of people. Yeah. And then like they didn't count on her being there. <laughs> okay, what's the name of this movie again? You're, You're next. next. You're next. Yeah. Is, is it on Netflix or? Uh, I know it's on American Netflix. I don't. I think it might be on Canadian Netflix. Now. Okay, I'm, I'm, I know what I'm watching tonight. But um, the the logo is like bloody bloody written. Your next mm -hmm. over a sheep's mask. So oh, is that looking, right? Yeah. It's awesome, man. Yeah, these killers wear these. It's incredible. Animal heads, yeah. it's, it's an incredible movie, man. Yeah. Oh, nice. She she is like that's how characters should be put together. I don't think I've seen her in anything else since then. Really, that's about it. I, I think she's like a dance movie or something. Like she's a dancer or something like oh, that. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so she's trying to branch out. <laughs> yeah, trying to branch out into like you know John McClane territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get that girl more parts, man. Yeah. You want you want your like female Jason Statham? That's her. Yeah. That's her. Yeah. 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 Plus, she again the third time she's gorgeous. Yeah, you know, again, I mean, that, that's what I mean. I mean, you're going to get a character who's, number one, she's attractive. Number two, she's capable. capable number three, you, yeah. she can act. And number four, she's bankable. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how much that movie made. I don't know if she's bankable, bankable, but, like, I think yeah. it wouldn't be a hard stretch. I wouldn't say she's bankable yet. Yet. But I don't think it's a stretch to get her into movies. Yeah. The potential's there. Yeah, it's like they say there's no Asian actors that can carry movies. There's tons. You're just not doing you're it. Not like, doing the chick who right, played yeah. Katana... Dan made a great point. Handsome Dan, our other yep. co-host, mm -hmm. made a great point. How well? Where was she when they were casting Ghost in the Shell? Yeah, clearly you could have. You could have. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think Principal was done on Suicide Squad by then. Absolutely. Yeah, this they, they the should have. The show from the movie. Holy. Yeah, it's um Sharni Vincent. Vincent. Yeah, yeah Sharni Vincent. Yeah. Just a destroyer. And she's born in Australia. Yeah, so yeah, she's that, Australian. That makes the most times the movie is. Uh... That girl will kick your teeth out. Then get you a bag to put them in, yeah. <laughs> and then like let you go home yeah. without pretty, killing you. Pretty successful, one million budget, twenty six million profit. That is really good. Yeah, yeah, well, it's really good. Well, Terrific movie. Yeah, yeah. I'm, what's it called again? You're next. You're next. Okay, got it. Oh, excellent. I know what I'm watching tonight. Then. If there if there are movie spikes <laughs> in Edmonton, I want I want to kick. Yeah, back. exactly. <laughs> We've said that name a few times. I want to kick back. <laughs> no, there's. It's not hard to to put bankable or at least like um. Create a bankable star. Yeah, it's uh, out of a minority or a female. Just, yeah, they're just not doing it right. They're not doing it right, and plus they're not marketing them right yeah. either. Yeah, they're not marketing them right either. Yeah. They're not doing it. Sorry, Rick, I gotta get going here. Gotta kick it, huh? I gotta kick it. Buddy. Well, we have had a pretty good run here, guys. How long? Uh, are we, we are two eighteen in. Oh wow! Not too shabby at all. Excellent. Pretty easy to get that going on. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank my uh, my guest today. Yeah. At um, well, soon to be triple S. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? At Raj SS99, soon to be, if possible, hopefully Raj Triple S on Instagram. Raj SS99. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign up for Instagram today. I have no idea how to use it, so I'm gonna learn. I will throw all your details on the uh, on the description below. Oh, excellent. They can just pan down and take a look at yeah. where you're at. Mm -hmm. Have you got an at that you would like to to throw out there? Uh, uh what sorry? Oh, an where, at. Where's Raj's next at gonna oh, be? Okay, gotcha. Oh, my next at. Um. I'll let you know next podcast. <laughs> at, at triple S. Yeah, at triple S. <laughs> He's just going to yank your, your carpet out from underneath you. Yeah, I'm yeah. just going to steal it. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm just going to um, yeah hit me up on Facebook if you want to at Raj, just Raj Sang, R -A -J, and, uh, cool. Sang, S -A -N -G -H -A, and uh And it'll all be in the description. Yeah, you see a guy wearing headphones. That's me. Cool, man. Yep. Thanks, guys. That was a good show.